Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, racers and race fans. We are here at K1 Speed in Canton, Ohio, the home of the Hall of Fame Village. I don't know if you guys have seen that driving up 77, but they've been doing a lot of construction there at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, but we do have the first ever exhibition of speed coming up here at K1 Speed Canton. And this is a very unique style event that we have uh, in store for you guys this evening. We've got 30 separate drivers that are going to be competing in three separate rounds of different uh, karting events. Uh, they're all going to be about the same length, but we've got, like I said, 30 riders that are going to be competing through these different rounds. Uh, round number one of competition, they're going to be into the randomizer. All 30 drivers are going to go into the randomizer and decide which of the qualifiers that they're going to be competing in. And they're going to try to get the top qualifying time in their qualifier, uh, the starting grid will be sorted by the qualifying time fastest to the slowest. And whenever they come into the sprint races after the qualifiers, those are going to be 15 lap events, and they have to use the joker lane at least five times. It, I mean, it has to use the joker lane five times in the course of that 15 laps. So it's going to be a strategy um, in those sprint races determining when you want to use that joker lap and how you are going to put it into effect. And each position that you advance in the starting grid, you're going to pick up a bonus point. So this is going to be a points-based competition, not necessarily a uh, winner-take-all style competition, but it's going to be a little bit of strategy involved with the bonus points, um, getting a lackluster qualifying time, and advancing through the field will get you a couple of extra bonus points. But if you do get a good qualifying time, you get... 10 points to start out with. Like, so like I said, this is a points style event. So round number one, eight lap qualifiers, three separate groups of eight lap qualifiers, uh, 10 points allotted to the fastest qualifier, and then we're going to split each, uh, excuse me, they're going to split the 30 drivers into two separate sprint races. The fast 15 and the slow 15 are going to be racing for 15 laps. Round number two is an entire different style competition. The qualifiers in this one are going to be in reverse. Still, eight lap qualifiers, but the racetrack is going to be reversed. So some drivers that are going to be competing uh, tonight here at K1 Speed have never drove the course in reverse. So they're going to be having to learn the course in those qualifiers and put those into good use in the sprint races later in the show. Uh, sprint races for the round number two is very similar to the first uh, sprint races, except for we're going to do 10 laps and forward. Then we're going to bring out our competition yellows and turn the carts around using the joker lane like I talked about in that first race. And then we're going to run 10 more laps in reverse. And similar to the other race, uh, they're going to get one bonus point for advancing from their qualifying position. And bonus points. Those are going to be key in round number two as well. But the one that's going to be a lot of fun to watch is going to be round number three, the final races of the day. Round number three of competition, they're not going to go through the randomizer. They are going to be slotted into races right off the right off the bat. And they're going to be slotted into the fastest, or excuse me, the 15 drivers with the most points and the 15 drivers with the least amount of points. And they're going to race for 20 laps competition yellow on lap number 10 and they're going to get 30 boosts in the course of those 20 laps so do you use all 30 boosts do you hold on to the boosts do you not use them as you can see on the screen you get one bonus point per unused boost in those boost races so you can get some extra bonus points and it may not be the winner of that boost race that gets the overall victory of the evening because it is a points tally event strategy is key we do have 30 riders that are going through the randomizer right now. We've got Willis Elkins, Tristan Hartong, Tim Fair, Shane Transu, Ryan Gardner, Rachel Hart, PJ Manny-Penny, Nick Hastoff, Mitch Shannon, Marshall Miller, Larry Murphy, Katie Wise, Devin Horner, Derek Raymond, Dennis Henry, Larry Murphy, Chris Nanchoff, Marshall Miller, Chris Locke, Mitch Shannon, Chase Witt, Nick Nastoff, Charles Squires, Chad Squires, Brennan Squires, Brennan Thompson, Bob Sibilia, yeah, Armand Deligny, he is the ghost, Andy Cook, and Adam Weaver. So you can see all of those uh, drivers just on screen just a moment ago. Their points are all zeroed out. Everybody starts at naught. So they're going to be getting the first group of points in the first round of competition. Um, any word that we have gotten the ride drivers through the randomizer? Um, 
don't know about that yet, but we are in the process of getting the drivers through that randomizer right now and getting them staged up into their carts for qualifier number one any moment now. So we're going to get competition underway at here at K1 Speed Indoor Kart Racing for the first ever exhibition of speed here in just a couple of moments. All right, we do have carts on the track. I don't have a list of who is out there currently on the race course, but these are eight, or excuse me, 10 of the drivers that have gone through that randomizer. They are just trying to figure out their qualifying positions. They're going to be going out there and trying to set a fast lap time. Ah, uh, here we go. We have got 10 drivers on course. We've got Charles Squires, Chase Witt, Devin Horner, Nick Nastoff, Bob Sibilla, Derek Raymond, Giovanni Black Blackerby. He is a new name on my list. Also have Andy Cook, David Angus, and Marshall Miller on track in this one. So they're just out there right now putting some heat in those tires. Yeah, I don't know if you guys were um, on s on the stream for the first ever 12 hours of can that we had, but that was a lot of strategy with cart battery management. But these are more of the sprint-style events where they're just trying to sh set those fast lap times and try to pull away from the rest of the field. But this is round number one, so these are going to be the Joker lines in the sprint race. I don't believe they're going to be utilizing the Joker lanes in the qualifiers. They're just going to be utilizing the Joker lanes in the sprint races later. So they're just out there trying to set some fast lap times. Uh, I do believe the fastest lap of the K1 Speed Canton indoor or excuse me, outdoor cart track is around the 39.5 second range. So I'm not sure if we're going to be having drivers best that time here today as it is starting to uh, get a little bit cool outside. So the racing surface will not have as much heat in it, and they are not going to be there for transferring as much heat to the tires in these carts. So they may not be as sticky outside. And there is a little bit of moisture in the air here in uh, North Canton, Ohio, here on Friday evening. So that may also play a factor later in the evening. There may be a little bit of moisture that may accrue on the racing surface, and that may slow down some carts may cause some handling uh changes it'll be interesting when when the sun does go down but right now we see marshall Miller with a solid qualifying time 40.127 he is yeah he is at least half a lap or excuse me half a second faster than bob sibilla the second fastest qualifier in this one so they're gonna shuffle these drivers into the fast 15 and the slow 15 the fast 15 are going to go into sprint race number one and the slow 15 are going to go into sprint race number two. So these drivers are just kind of feeling each other out, uh, seeing who's going to drive a little bit aggressive. They can uh, pay attention to the driver's shirts, their helmets, uh, what they are wearing, and uh, it may affect the way that they try to make some maneuvers later in the races. Finally, join up here in the, uh, in the tower, James. Hey, Derek, how are you? Oh, man. I've been excited for this event for quite some time. It's You've, a uh, great Friday night, isn't it? Friday night under the lights. Yeah, you could be at a football game, a high school football game, or you could be here. This is yeah. th this is up my alley for sure. Or even better, you're watching it on the stream with us, so we appreciate that. Very much so. And that, that's really what we wanted with this event. We really wanted to be a Friday night under the lights, come, race, have a good time, experience go-karting competitively, but also have a good time. Excellent. So we do see Marshall Miller dropping below the 42nd mark that is an absolutely incredible time uh backing that up with another 40 second lap time so he is looking to be the number one qualifier on the number eight cart uh, most all of these carts should be pretty even in their build and tire pressures and battery capacity so everybody is out there on even machines it is just driver's experience exactly and that's our goal here is to try to make the machines as even as possible but we understand too that there's just physical differences between cars and that's just the nature of racing sometimes um, but throughout the night that's what the point system is for the points is to take a little bit of the car out of the equation and make this more about um, so maybe some strategy on top of some fast racing so i did just get a glimpse of the indoor 
uh, lap counter. And it looks like Marshall Miller is with that 39.8 uh, second lap time. That is the fastest. Bob Sevilla backing that up with a 40.2 second lap time. So he is uh, he's your number two qualifier right now. He has just bested Devin Horner's lap time of the 40.593. Uh, so we are. Well, one thing to keep in mind with what we're looking at right now is they are we are looking at their last lap time, and then yes. they are sorted by uh, speed. So I did get a glimpse of the indoor yeah. leaderboard, and it did see Marshall up at the top still. All right, sorry about that. For the viewers at home, wanted to make sure that you knew that that was the uh, uh, <laughs> the the most most current lap time. So you can get a glimpse of that indoor leaderboard every once in a while whenever the cameras do pan in there. Uh, you can there you see it. Uh, Marshall is with the fastest lap time. That, is that the order in which they are on the race course right now? Yeah, so the okay. sort order is on your screen, and then the time over there at the right-hand side is the most current lap. Okay. So that's why you'll see some guys jumping into purple and then going back to yellow as the times change. Marshall still with the great lap time, sub 40 seconds. Um, what is the outdoor lap record? I was afraid you are going to ask that. Um not good at remembering the numbers sometimes. So I think we're at a 38.5, 38.6, if I remember right. Okay. It's right down there with the sub 39s. Now, people ask us about that all the time. It's like, oh, can I run a 38 second? Eh, you have to have really ideal conditions. You, it, it, the, the track outside's gotta be the perfect temperature. Uh, humidity's gotta be the right level, all that kind of stuff. Um, 38 seconds is really ideal. I doubt we're gonna be seeing 38 seconds tonight, but well, I guess we'll find out as the night goes on. It'll be very, very impressive. I have seen Marshall uh, click off about a tenth off of sequential laps, like taking a tenth a second off, taking another tenth off, and another tenth he's, off, and now he's, he's almost going purple every single lap, isn't he? Yes, he is being very, very consistent out there, and that is something that you really want to be as well, not just setting a, a blistering lap time, consistency of how fast you can run those laps. Absolutely, because when we get to the position races, that's where he's potentially going to shine. So we've seen Giovanni uh, slip up with that previous lap. I don't know if he had a, a bump in the wall or what was the issue, but he lost about three seconds compared to his previous lap time, and he has just backed it up there with a 40.4. And I believe Giovanni is our youngest driver tonight. Very um, interesting. Yeah, we'll try to find his age for us real quick, but he just recently graduated to the adult carts. He was been, or he's still a competitor in our kids' league, uh, the junior cars, and tonight he's joining us in the big cars. Checkered flag has been flown for qualifier number one, and Marshall Miller most definitely set the number one qualifying time in that one. Uh, he will be, he's most definitely guaranteed his spot in the fast sprint race with times like that. We can't, we can't uh, count them out until they're all racing, or excuse me, until they're all done being off yeah. the race course. Yeah, exactly. And again, the points could screw everything up because you may have touched on this already, but we get down to the final race and uh, there's going to be significant um, opportunity to gain points. So even though you're the fastest, you, you may have somebody slip through there. Yes, 30 points. 30 point swing is potential in that final uh, race of the evening. That would be the boost race. 30 boosts are being uh, presented to the drivers. They each last about six seconds. So when do you use those on the race course? Do you use them? Uh, do you use them all? Do you not use any of them? Do you save them and just get the bonus points? That's really going to be a factor and in that final race. Yeah, that, that button is just going to be screaming at those drivers because they're going to be running a position race and they're going to want to be on that button realizing that every time they do that it's going to cost them points. So Yep. I can't wait to see that race. So Marshall did have the fastest lap in that one with a 30, 39.7, 39.8 essentially. Uh, Giovanni with a 40.1. Birthday 2013. Wow, he is yeah. just a kid. Yeah, absolutely. 11 He's years old, 10 years old. Not even shown as a teenager in our system. So Bob Sibyl, a great time too, ranking up third, finishing up the top three. We did not have any ladies on the race course in that one. We do have a few ladies racing with us tonight. We do have Rachel Hart. We do have, um, oh, I've seen the name. Katie. Katie, yep. Yeah. Not only are they female drivers, but they are uh, female drivers that lead some of our in, uh, series. So Katie just wrapped up the endurance championship. She won that uh, complete series. It's a six-month competition. And Rachel Hart, who uh, is bottom of the screen right here, taking some pictures. They, we've got her, which just came back from the K1 National Championships and is also leading in our GP series. So, Wasn't she like 16th in the 2022 K1 Championships? 
somewhere uh, around there. Yeah, I, I don't remember the number, but she was up she there. She was up there. She did qualify for the national championship. Uh, f- five of our drivers got to go out to California for the national championships. And uh, I see Armand in this so. one. We do have 10 more drivers set to hit the track in just a moment. And Rachel then will be in qualifier number three. So we'll see her out there in just a moment when she gets the camera put down. But we're getting ready to send the drivers out on the track here in qualifier number two. Another 10 laps. And we'll see if anybody can touch that 39.7 second lap time. And Armand Deligny, the ghost, he has been exceptionally consistent in every single race that I have seen him compete in. And I am really excited to see him out here in this event as well. So we have got 10 more drivers set to hit the track. We've got Katie Wise, David Pons, Brennan Squires, Corey Ricker, P.J. Manny Penny, Larry Murphy, Dennis Henry, Armand Deligny, Mitch Shannon, and Zach Harmon all competing in this one. And they're getting ready to get the go-ahead to head out there on the race course to put some heat in those tires, and they will be underway in just a few moments. Heat race excuse me, qualifier race number two, round number one of competition at K1 Speed in Canton for the first ever exhibition of speed. So we're just down there in the pits right now. Mounting up a couple of GoPros, we have GoPros on all of our carts racing with us today. So that is gonna give us great onboard footage. And the number 33 cart, that is Larry Murphy. I was talking to Larry earlier in the evening i can tell it's larry because of the gloves that he's wearing right now i was talking to larry he's 76 years old and he just wants to have some fun racing carts so we'll see um if the age is the extra experience when it comes to this one so they're getting the go ahead to head out there on the race course to put some heat in those tires and we'll get the green flag waving in just a moment so these drivers are randomized into which qualifier they're going to go into. They're randomized for qualifiers in round number one and round number two of competition, but there is no qualifiers in round three of competition. They're just going to be racked up based on their points and how they sit in the evening. So the drivers are out there right now on their yellow flag initial lap in qualifier number two, round number one of competition. You can see the sun is starting to set here in North Canton, and it's getting a little bit darker outside, so that may affect uh, the racing surface out there. It may get a little bit slippery, uh, so they may be having to adjust the way that they drive these carts mid-race. So they're making their way back inside. Green flag has flown for qualifier number two. I'm really excited whenever we get all of these top 15 on the race course at one point in time and seeing how they work their way through the pack. Right now we are on board with Armand Deligny. He's currently in the number eight spot on the race course, but he's gonna make a couple of quick moves and work his way past Dennis Henry and advance another position on the race course. Here we see the number 25 cart. That's Mitch Shannon making his way across the start-finish line and into turn number one. He is the number two cart on the track, so they're just going to be putting some heat in these tires right now, so the times are not going to be as brilliant as we've seen uh, Marshall get down to in qualifier number one this early. We probably will see those qualifying times break into the low 40s maybe even the 39s, but with the sun going down, the racing surface outside, it will hold the temperature of the day for quite some time, but whenever the race course outside cools off, it is gonna be difficult for these drivers to maintain traction out there. So here we are on board with, that is the number 28 cart, I believe. Six second time. That is that's the number one time so far that we have seen that has bested Marshall Miller's lap time. So that is a it's a very good time.
David Pons backing up that 39.6 second lap time with a 39.7. So he is being extremely consistent out here in qualifier number two. He put some heat in those tires early in this qualifier, and he is just running consistent sub, sub 40 second lap times. There on screen, we have the number 33. That's Larry Murphy, one of the oldest competitors that we have racing the exhibition of speed. He's making his way around the carousel and down the start straightaway right now. Improving on his lap time, he is about the mid 41 second range, so he, he's he got some time to improve. He's got some areas on the race course where he can observe other faster drivers and maybe utilize some different lines in heats later in the day, in different qualifiers later in the day, even in, in the sprint race at the end of this. Oh, we got a collision between the number 22 of Katie Wise and the 32, 33 of Larry Murphy. Uh, coming together. No, that's 32 of Corey Ricker coming together. So Katie Wise and Corey Ricker coming together just there in turn number three, but they have gotten it settled out. Just past the halfway mark in this one, and David Ponce just continues to click off laps on the number 36 cart. There we can see him exiting the building and going outside right now into turn number five. David Ponce, we just seen him glimpsing into the far portion of the screen. He has incredible times here on the outdoor course at K1 Speed Canton for the exhibition of speed. He'll be crossing the finish line momentarily. We'll see if he can best that 39.5. That is exceptional. Back on board with the number 32 of Corey Ricker. Wow, David Pons responding to that best lap time with a 39.2. So that is absolutely incredible. He has bested Marshall Miller's lap times, and I'm really con really curious uh, to see the combined qualifying times whenever we get all of these qualifiers completed to see how David Pond stacks, off, stacks up against the rest of the pack. And even the top 15, I'm really curious to see around the 12 through 17 mark, all of the drivers, most of the drivers are right there in the mid 40 second range. So drivers 10 through 20, are going to be pretty much a blanket with nearly identical times there in the middle of the field. So it's going to be interesting. 39.3 from David Pons on his previous lap, so backing up the 39.2 with the 39.3. And there we see Mitch Shannon finally busting into the 39-second range with Zach Harmon nearly breaking into, the, breaking into the 39s as well with a 40 flat. That is his fastest lap time. Just about another lap remaining here in qualifier number two. David Pons' average lap time is 39.6 seconds. That is incredible. His average lap time is faster than most other drivers' best laps. There, I just got a glimpse of some of the drivers getting themselves carted up for qualifier number three as we are on our final lap here in qualifier number two. David Pons still with the best lap in this one. Zach Harmon with the number two best lap with a 39.877. That is just going to best Mitch Shannon's 39.882. So there we have seen the checkered flag fly here in qualifier number two. There we see the drivers in qualifier number three all suited up and getting into their carts, and they'll be heading out there on the racetrack in just a moment in this one. So there we have it. David Ponce with the number one time of 39.5, besting Zach Harmon and Mitch Shannon's lap times. I swear that I seen Mitch Shannon with a 40.0 at one point in time. Mitch Shannon's best lap time was a 39.88, so they're are the best lap times 39.2, 39.877, and 39.88 for David Ponce, Zach Harmon, and Mitch Shannon. Those will be your qualifiers one, two, and three 
and they are looking pretty good for being in sprint race number one. But we'll figure all of that out whenever the results get posted and we have the fast 15 and the slow 15, and that's when bonus points are going to start to come into effect as we're going to open up that joker lane in these sprint races, and the drivers must go through the joker five times. I mean, you can go through it four times. You can go through it once if you want, but that joker lane is going to save you about, ah, about 10, 15 seconds or more per lap, and you must use it five times can't use it any more than that. If you use it more than five times, you are disqualifying yourself from your finishing position in that sprint race. But Joker Lane is going to be effect later in sprints one and two here in round number one of competition. There, we're just getting a panoramic of all of the drivers that are just ready to go out there on the race course. And this one, I know for certain that we have uh, Rachel Hart and Corey Salerno here in heat number three. We will get the list of the remaining drivers here in heat number three in just a couple of moments. And they're getting ready to head out there on the track to try to set some fast qualifying times and try to be in sprint race number one here for the first ever exhibition of speed at K1 Speed Canton. So we're just finalizing a couple of things and putting the GoPros on board with a few of these drivers. So there we're on board with the number 23 in the paddock still in the pits. Ready to go and set his lap time. I don't have a list of which driver is which yet. There we go. The number 12 machine. Shane Transu, Corey Salerno on the number 10. The 31 of Adam Weaver. The number 2 of Rachel Hart. The number 5 of Chris Nanchop. The 16 of Willis Elkins. The number 23. There we are. We were on board with the Tristan Hartong. Also have Brandon Thomas, Ryan Gardner, and Chad Squires in heat number 3. So I'm really curious to see how low the lap times get in this one, if they can be anywhere near that 39-2 that we've seen come from David Ponds there in qualifier number two. The more these carts get out there on the track, they are going to be transferring heat from their tires back into the racing surface. So there will be um, a couple of lines out there on the track that may be a little bit warmer than the rest of the race course where the carts have been utilizing that section of the track more than others and it may hold the heat in the race course better and therefore transfer the heat back to the tires and allow these carts to handle just a little bit better. But as you can see, the sun is really starting to come down outside and these carts are gonna be dealing with some adverse conditions outside. Who's our notable ones in this one, James? Oh, let's see. This is the third heat. And, well, I can only speak for the, the guys that I've seen on a regular basis here at this track because um, we have to keep in mind we might see some surprises here tonight. But um, I can tell you as far as this track goes, we got uh, Corey Salerno. He's famous for the Salerno move. Um, he's he's. He's a good qualifier, but when we get into position racing, especially then, um, Rachel Art, obviously we talked about her. Chris Nanchuff, uh, just he could drive any cart. So let's just see what time he puts out there. And Tristan Hartong um, just won a couple of our races here at Boost not too long ago. So all those people to watch. Excellent. So Tristan Hartong may be a little bit more exceptional in round number three of competition for the Boost races. 39.8 eight already from Rachel Hart. Wow, that is... Doesn't that take her t much time to warm up, does it? No, that was very impressive already on the number two cart, and she is trying to be contested with Chris Nanchoff. So those two carts already hooking it up out there on the racetrack, and they may try to push each other to some sub 39 second lap times. Riding on board with Rachel Hart right now. You can tell it's her with a Sonic the Hedgehog helmet as it is bright blue. It's it's definitely a notable helmet. 
Yeah, she loves to go by the nickname Sonic, and uh, probably see some of her social media stuff posted on that if we get a sh lower shot of it at some point. I wouldn't be too surprised if we see Chris back off just a little bit. That's probably where we see the 43 because he, he needs some track space. Yeah. So there we've seen Rachel lose about a second on the first lap to lap two. So that may have been, you know, getting the pressure from Nanchoff and not hitting her marks as, you know, efficiently as she could have. So she's going to get out there with some clear real estate in this one. Chad Squires, even though he's down at the bottom, has competed in endurance series here before. So uh, he's he's had a few laps around this track, no doubt. Now the endurance races. They run, if we're outdoor, it's 45 laps. And if we're indoor, it's 65 laps. So it takes about a half hour. It's one constant one run of the final race. And one thing we just added recently is a cart swap. So that added a little bit extra challenge to the racers uh, having to come into the pits, change it to a different cart, get back out on the racetrack, warm up the tires, and go from there. So, Oh, we see some battling out there on the racetrack between the number 13 and 15 Boy, carts. Boy, the squeeze, that's for sure. Chad Squire, Chad Brennan Squires. Thomas, yeah. and Shane Trans Transu all duking it out there. Rachel's previous lap with 39.5, so that's really good. Nanchoff breaking into the 39s as well. Even Mitch Shannon. Or no, that's still a lot of times from the previous one over here yeah. on our side screen. But Chris Nanchoff really uh, making some mistakes on that previous lap, perhaps. Lost a whole bunch of time. Already halfway through the qualifier. These eight laps can go pretty quick sometimes. There we are on board with the number 23 of Tristan Hartong. He is making his way around the carousel and down the start straightaway right now. Crossing the finish line. Nothing noteworthy on that lap. No, but very close between three, four, and five on that. Rachel Hart still breaking out the 39 and a half. Like she is very consistently running 39 and a half second laps. We've seen her run about half of the laps that she's been on the racetrack at that lap time. So she's been very consistent as well. And here's thing, something I would dare even mention is cart number two is has, has the stigma against it uh, that it's a very slow cart. We have some of our racers who don't like to drive that one. Um, but it's just it's, uh, it's proof that, one, you can adjust lines and the driving style to uh, fit the cart. And, two, you never know what you're going to get when you come back to K1. 39-3 from Rachel Hart. Laying it down. On the slow cart. Yeah, on the slow cart. We don't like to say that around here, but <laughs> just it's an unavoidable comment, I have to say. She's definitely uh, putting the deuce up front as she has a notable advantage over Chris Nanchoff. Yeah, it just keeps going purple lap after lap. I think Nanchoff's best time is around a 39.8, so Rachel Hart about a half a second faster than your second fastest driver on course. Is there any way that we can get this updated, James? Yeah, absolutely. White flag has flown already uh, for the drivers here in qualifier number three. Manchoff with a 39.3, so that's a very, very good lap. 39.37 for Rachel Hart, so a hundredth of a second separates Yeah, Manchoff. finally got a clean lap in as he jumps to number two. And Adam Weaver moving up to number three, just over the 42nd. 40.089, that's a very good time as well. And across the line for the final lap. I was saying that I believe positions 10 through 20 are going to have nearly identical lap times, but we'll really figure that out whenever all of the laps get posted. And I'm curious to see how the Joker lane is going to affect some yes. of these drivers. Yes, can't wait to see the Joker la lane race um, because it just adds so much to the strategy the whole thing the one that i'm looking forward to is the reverse track because coming from a, a motocross background that i do we always talk about going out and riding the tracks backwards just try yep. to get the lines worked in to see if you can utilize you know your skills on a different way so turning the track around backwards and some of these drivers that have never driven the track backwards are going to have to learn like it was their first time driving a car again it's totally different, and a lot of drivers like it as their preferred direction, surprisingly. 
Um, I know personally I love driving reverse. When I'm out testing cars and I want to feel, I, I feel like I can be more consistent with my line in reverse. Uh, but not everybody has run that direction because you have to come either for an event or you have to have some sort of qualifying time. Or you have to come to an event like this in order to do that. Now, how much uh, does it take for the staff here to switch the directions of the race course? Do they have to move the Nothing yellow at flags? All. Nothing at all. Yeah, that's the cool thing is we set up the track to go in both directions. So. Very, very good. So it is uh, multifaceted racing here at K1 Speed Canton, and we have multiple disciplines of racing for the first ever exhibition of speed. So we're going to get the qualifying times tallied up now. Yep, and um, the other thing I was going to note about the reverse is the... Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to draw a blank on that. The, uh, not the, the flow of the track is obviously very good, but um, anybody who comes here on a normal arrive and drive and sets a sub-41 or a sub-27 second lap time in normal direction can qualify to run the reverse. Something we set aside as like our pro skill. Something we'd like to tell people: we don't want you to get, we don't want you to get bored here. We want you to keep you entertained. I'm also looking forward to the final race of the day. The final races of the day, the boost races that we have. Uh, two individual sprint races, no qualifiers. They're just going to be staged up based on how many points that they have. And I was down there in the drivers' meeting, and I seen numerous hands get raised whenever uh, we asked the question: Who has never ran boost here at K1 Speed? Yeah, because the boost is only used on Monday nights. So if if you don't come on Monday night, we, and we get asked that all the time, okay, what's the boost button? What's the boost button? Well, you got to come on Monday to find out. There we go. We just seen a 38.4, I think, was the lap time of the fastest lap of the outdoor cart. So I don't know if we're going to get there. That's fast. It is, yeah. So what their track workers are doing now is they're removing the center section of barrier, and this is going to open up the joker. So we are just in the process of tallying the results, and we will get those finalized in just a few moments. And we will have sprint race number one getting lined up. Now, are we going to have to do any cart maintenance on any of these events? Are we going to throw any of them on the chargers, or will they have enough they, uh, battery to last the whole evening? But they definitely get charged after every race. So right now they'll be setting them on the chargers. And we it's about a one-to-one -one ratio, so about one minute of track time, one minute of charge time. That okay. allows us to get turned over pretty quick. Three rows of cars. By the time we get through the three qualifying sessions, we're back to the same row. There we go. And Answered a whole bunch of questions that I had in one, <laughs> one answer. <laughs> one thing we're doing tonight is uh, we have the Wheel of Fun or the Wheel of Cart Numbers. Uh, it's one of the two. I don't know. But everybody down there is hitting the button. It's spinning for a random cart assignment, and then that's the car they get in. That's the randomizer. Yeah. I was talking about that. Everybody had to go and select which cart that they would be racing and which qualifier they would be racing. We are right next to the Akron Canton Airport. Yeah. So that's a UFO coming in for a landing. Could be that too. Hey, nobody's telling us it's not. <laughs> so we're going to get uh, the results tallied and we're going to get race sprint race number one. Uh, racked up down there in staging in just a few moments. So we're going to get uh, round number one completed and points tallied because we already do have some points accumulated from those qualifiers. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're going to maybe take a quick break and okay. get those cars and get those driver's assignments ready to go as our wonderful uh, team behind the scenes is taking care of the points. There we us. go. Rachel Hart, Marshall Miller, and David Pons all getting 10 points as they were the number one qualifiers in their groups. And as you can see, going down through the rest of the list. Okay. So very, very good. So Josh, give me all the cards in row one. Yeah, that's, uh, you'll have several, several, several cars tied, but then as we go through, we'll uh, end up with some more. We're still working on getting all the points yeah. um, posted, but those are definitely the top three. Uh, actually, that's the top 15 that we're going to be having race with us. So the ghost, Armand Deligny, is going to just squeak into heat number one sprint race number one but like i said we're going to take a couple of minutes and get these results tallied and we'll be back with the start of sprint race number one yeah i need four more
So, yep, Andy, you're good to go back whenever you're ready. So we're just checking out a little bit of off-screen stuff right now, and we can see a couple of these drivers uh, selecting their carts via the randomizer. Um, you can't see it on your screen, but I can see it off your screen. So they're just going through in sprint race number one. All the drivers there in sprint race number one are just determining which cart they're going to get. And now this driver's got one of two choices which cart he's going to get. <laughs> I think he got that one. So number 20 going to that driver. <laughs> what will it be? <laughs> so there we have all of the drivers into their respective carts and they're going to be helmeting up right now and getting uh getting suited up for the start of sprint race number one 15 lap race so this is twice as long as the qualifiers were and they have to use a joker yeah and they have to do joker five times well i take that back they don't have to they have the option of not doing a joker but it would significantly delay your race because um, the, the Joker lap basically circumvents the entire outdoor track, so you you would want to use all five. But um, the biggest thing for us is making sure they don't do six because that would not be fair. But in a 15-lap race, we're going to see a lot of mix-ups. We're going to see people in positions change constantly. No, a couple oh of noteworthy no, things no, is no these drivers yep. are not permitted to use the Joker lane on yellow flag laps. They're not permitted to use the Joker lane on the first lap, and they're not permitted to use the Joker lane on the last lap ask us how we found that 13, out, found 14, that out 15, we'll grid you back I think there. it makes some, I think it makes sense <laughs> I think I can figure it out the first time we went to go use that uh, for a boost league somebody waited till the very last lap we had a cart problem stopped the field and when we went back to racing guess who won the race Joker guy yeah Joker guy so also, you don't want to use it on there's the... A, there's a driver here that still holds a grudge against that other driver because he won that one race. <laughs> you cannot use the Joker lane on the first lap, and that is mainly a safety uh, instance as these drivers are just going to be getting the green flag. They're all going to be going down uh, after f turn number four into turn number five. They're all going to be bunched up together, and we don't want to have the first driver in the field go to hit the Joker lane and then <laughs> get T-boned by consecutive other drivers yeah it's going to be interesting enough with 15 guys on track um and you might have mentioned but we do ask them to hold their hand up to give warning to other uh drivers so they know they're about to cut across the track over to the joker but it it can get chaotic and so you know, don't don't want too many people uh t-boning each other so they're on screen we have the fast 15 and the slow 15 and i was uh I, I mentioned that we may or may not have some drivers sandbag their qualifying times to get into the slower main, but that may not also be a strategically, you know, good thing to do either. Because the points are so weird, and we've yes. done that on purpose, so, yeah, it's going to be hard to predict like because to like to obviously the last race is going to be a big wild card. Um, but the other thing, too, is when they finish with this race, they're going to get bonuses for the... For positions really gained, so it just—it's really hard to sandbag with the point system the way that it is. Yes. Typically, for an arrive and drive race, how many carts would you have on the track at one given time? Twelve. So we are just above that. Yeah, we trust them, I guess. Yeah, these guys—they uh, pay their dues. Yeah, they run forty-one to forty-two second lap times. I guess they're okay. They know how to handle. And. For the endurance races or a league night, how many carts would we have on the track at one given time? About the same. So sometimes for boost, we've done 15 cars. We have a lot of people showing up, but Dresden. most part, 10 to 12. Okay. So these sprint races at the end of each of the right, rounds so with 15 drivers are going to get kind of congested out there on the track, and it may get a little so. bit bumper and bumper. I think so. I hope so. <laughs> Gives us something to talk about up here in the box. I, uh, I kind of filled in our camera operators and told us, <laughs> I told them that it's going to be really hard to follow people because there's just going to be joke around people all the time. Yes. The no race, so. And fortunate for electronic timing and scoring. Which we hope works successfully. <laughs> no We've done a lot of testing with the timing and scoring system over the last three weeks. We did an upgrade here because of that problem we were having. Um, and so far, I don't know if I should say it now, but testing was successful. I think we're good. We'll just hold to it. So there on screen, we see the 15 drivers that are, gonna, that are going to be competing in heat 
excuse me, in sprint race number one, got David Pons, Rachel Hart, and Chris Nanchoff. Uh, also, Marshall Miller, Zach Harmon, Mitch Shannon, Adam Weaver, Corey Salerno, Giovanni Black Blackerby. You're on board with David Pons, and what is he doing? Is he playing with his phone? I guess the rules didn't uh, prohibit it. Texting and driving. We should uh, reassess the, the fines for the next race. David asked me today <laughs> if we were going to be doing drive it, driver interviews during the race. So Marshall's on his phone, uh, too. Oh, look at these guys. <sighs> Texting and driving. Yeah, so David asked me today if they were going to be doing driver interviews, and I said, eh, maybe. And he said that he would work on his lines. So we'll have to see if we can catch him later on the night. Also joining us here in sprint race number one, we've got Tristan Hartong, Bob Sabella, Brendan Squires, Armando Ligny, the Ghost, and PJ Manny Penny, as well as Corey Ricker. So we're just filing all of these drivers out on the track right now on board with the number. That's not the number 17 of Brendan Squires. We're looking at the number 17 of Brendan Squires. Yeah, I think we're on board with um, Corey. Number eight, Corey Salerno. And because they did random card assignments, the cars are sitting in the wrong order in the rows, so you're going to see a little bit of chaos here when everybody comes out of the pits as they order themselves up. I don't, I don't know why it hadn't dawned on me that we were going to have the three fastest, the three second fastest. Well, no, not necessarily. I take that back. I apologize. This is not sorted based on points. This is based on lap times. Correct. So. So I was asking you earlier in the day, are we going to be splitting the sprint races into the fast 15 or the slow 15? Or are we going to, you know, pick the odds and the evens out and have, you know, a fast heat and both sprint race mains. That was my question to you, and we determined that it was a fast 15 and a slow 15. Yeah, you're right. And uh, that kind of. Yeah, lights are flat. No, I'm serious. Lights are flat. <laughs> Sitting on board with the number 19 of David Pons, uh, just talking to some of our track staff and figuring a couple of last minute things out before we get the, uh, the green flag flying. Yeah, to his benefit there um I'm it. sometimes we uh sometimes we use the track lights to start the race and sometimes we use the uh, uh the flags now and so that's what they're asking for these sprint races are they going to be a standing start or are they going to yes. be rolling yep they're going to be standing start yep okay now when we get into these restarts where we reorganize the field or if we have this competition yellow later on the night that those are going to be rolling restarts with the pace car that's correct all right, so we're just getting everybody filed into their starting positions based on their qualifying times. And a lot of these drivers have to make up a lot of ground. Wow, there's a lot of field to make up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you're good. Lights? Yep, lights. You said uh, we're going to go back to green with the pace car. That'd be fun to just leave the pace car out there, see what he can do. Sitting on board with that number nine machine of Corey Salerno. He is He's qualifying in the number eight position, so he has to make his way all the way uh, down the start straight away and into turn number one before he can catch the number 19 of David Pond. So the, the bonus points are going to be difficult for some of these drivers to uh, to pick up in these mains, in these sprint race mains. No doubt, because all these people are super fast tonight and they're sorted based on their qualifying position so theoretically the field should just stretch out theoretically yeah we'll see if that happens huh but anything can happen if a cart gets loose into one of the turns that could bunch up all the carts again and people can make different lines different passes so this is definitely going to be interesting Jason, the race director, looking to give him final instructions. Everybody is going on green. We just 
Everybody is going on green. We just heard him say that. So we see the yellow flag flashing right now. I got Anthony, sorry. I'll back up. There you go. Good. Sorry. Sitting on board with the pole position holder. There they go. David gets a good jump right into turn one, get that clean. That's so important because if anybody of those two drivers behind him takes him into turn one, it's a very difficult line to defend. So no driver is out there in the car number, cart number two that we talked about earlier in the program. Right. And so far, David Ponce putting a little bit of distance between him and the number seven of Rachel Hart. Here's something no, to know. Uh, Rachel Hart is on the number seven cart right now and she races the number seven dirt bike. So oh, yeah, that was just great. a lucky yeah, lucky cart there. So nobody. Oh, there's all kinds of congestion going back there before the carousel. Nobody can use that uh, joker lane on the first lap and now we're gonna see drivers start to utilize the joker lane as Rachel is starting to reel in the number 19 to David Ponce. That is, that would be for a bonus point. There we see David, he's gonna it looked like he put his hand up for the joker lane, but he didn't do it. It did look like he had his hand up, but it looked like he may have had too much pressure from the number seven of Hart and was not able to. Oh, his ghost tries to go off to the side there. He uh, quickly exits for his first joker. Sitting on board with the number 20 machine. I believe that was number 20, PJ Manny Penny. It looks like all three of those drivers jokered all at the same time. Knows the tail, even though. Oh, look, look, look on the inside. Yeah, he wow. is going to gain that position. But what is he going to do in four? Is he going to squeeze him? Going back outside, there's the number 34 cart of Adam Weaver still he running he up front. Armand maintained that position. Marshall has worked his way into the number one spot. As we see, David Pons has been has slipped up to the number seven position. I don't believe he's used the joker at all, as we've seen the top right. Right drivers utilize it. Exactly. So Pons has used the joker lane there, and he has moved back up to the top of the field. I had a Nanchoff. Yeah, I, I wonder if Pons is going to joker this lap because it looked like he thought about it or he signaled it. And on board PJ Manny Penny. Another accomplished endurance racer. There we see a whole gaggle oh, of drivers. Oh, it's a squeeze in four. The 25 machine electing to not utilize the joker. One driver there, the number 20 of PJ Manny Penny, elected to use it. So he's going to slip out just ahead of the number 19 of David Pons. So that might end up being a battle for position later in this one. But he was David trying Pons. to avoid traffic, and then he exits right into traffic. That's the thing about doing so many joker laps tonight. Not only exiting into traffic, but exiting into faster traffic as he put him right in the lead pack of uh, Pawns and the rest of the crew. And PJ's going to joker again? Yep. So he's utilized at least two of his five jokers, so he may be uh, setting himself up for failure potentially later in this uh, sprint race where some drivers may be saving their jokers, but you also... Well, well, the good strategy on his part was he was in that traffic. So getting in, getting out of that joker lane quickly does allow him to get a little bit cleaner track space. Now we can see what he can do for lap time. Armand. Oh, he's going to do another one. Using the joker again. Back to back to back on the... He's trying laps. to put some positions on the board. As he qualified, pretty lackluster... And are the bonus points only determined based on your finishing position? Finishing position, yep. not passes yep. during the race, but if, how many points you, or how many positions you advanced at the end versus where you qualified? That's correct. Gotcha. And there's not a punishment for losing spaces that are uh, positions, but there is a benefit to gaining. Say after about half of this event, PJ Manny Penny has utilized his jokers to put him. In okay. the number one spot on the track. Yeah, exactly. Nanchoff also uh, with some great times, and he sits in the number two spot on the track. Marshall Miller, he was one of our fastest drivers using the phone before the green flag flew, and he is just outside of the top three, but he still has some jokers that he can use. He may save... You know, four in a row for laps 12, or for laps 11, 13, 14, 11, 12, 13, and 14. 
And of course, David Pond's you know, right behind the number one, PJ. Oh, oh, he's going to push. Is he going to let them give that position back? Yeah, he is. He's pointing. Yeah. He should, he should let PJ take that position back. We'll see what he does on the outside. But, but David doesn't want to lose any time either, so you want him to get back. I guess PJ is just not going to take it. But he can't let off too much because he has Rachel Hart all over his rear bumper, and those two drivers have been all over each other since the green flag flew. So that may actually be the battle for the race lead. We just don't know it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. As David Ponce was the number one qualifier, Rachel Hart was your number two qualifier, and there we see Ponce hitting the joker lane. So that's going to take a couple of positions back, and Ponce may end up moving his way back up through the leaderboard. We are about two-thirds the way completed with sprint race number one, and so far Manny Penny... Ah, he has just been overtaken by the number nine of Corey Salerno, who has moved into the number one spot. Marshall Miller moving up to second. There we oh, see this David Ponce. going to be a squeeze right there. Woo, he came in hot through traffic, did the number 19 of David Ponce. And is that still Hart behind him? No. Yeah, that's Chris right in front yes. of him that he squeezed. Well, yeah, Hart is right behind him. So Rachel is still not letting David Ponce go. They are matching each other. If they hit, If one driver hits the joker, then Rachel will follow them through the joker. So Rachel is not allowing the number 19 of David Pons to get away. I have to imagine this is one of David's last jokers. Um, as we saw Chris Nanchuff go outside. There we see the number three of Marshall Miller now splitting the number 19 of David Pons and Rachel Hart. So Hart did not use the joker a couple of times when Pons did. So she may not have had the opportunity to use it. David having to defend on the inside because that's Marshall Miller right on his tail. And Marshall's going to look on the Whoa! inside. Oh, Marshall yep. giving, uh, giving the number 19 of Pond some business there in turn number seven. So, so far, Salerno on top of the leaderboard over David Pond's. And I just saw... PJ across the timeline, Armand, Armand completing one of the Joker laps. This is a very interesting as the Joker lane does really throw some stuff into it. There we see Pons hitting the Joker lane once again. So I am curious to see in a couple of more laps how this all settles out. As we see now, Rachel Hart has taken over the number one spot from David Pons. She must have, you know, made the move during one of the Joker lines and came out just ahead of the number 19 of Pons. So Pons may have been in some traffic, allowing the number seven of Hart to utilize that Joker to her advantage and put her back on top of the leaderboard with the number 21 of Zach Harmon sitting back there in third. And Armand Deligny, wow, he has worked his way through the field. He's going to get some bonus points if things were to end as they are right now as he was qualifying in something like the number 12 position. So advancing, you know, half a dozen spots for the number 14 are of the ghost. Adam Weaver is shown at the top of the charts, but I believe that means he, did he mess up his joker? He's not supposed to, okay, this would be the last, last lap. So this is how they should come across right now. I don't know. Adam is still scored in the lead. Was he able to get enough clear track to, main, to, to actually pull off the win for this? If so, that is what absolutely an epic. For this. If so, that is what absolutely an epic. Strategy. Weaver, Nanchoff, Hart. As everybody's Pons. lined up nose to tail on the very last lap coming to the track. Whoa, drive. getting Marshall Miller and Armand coming together. PJ does not want to give up that spot. That's PJ. Every spot, every point counts. Whoa, one, oh, driver got one driver sideways. And so unofficially, it shows Adam Weaver as the sprint race number one winner over Chris Nanchoff, Rachel Hart, David Pons, and Zach Harmon. What a strategy. 
What a great strategy on Adam Weaver's behalf to make sure that he got that joker lap just at the last second and jumped everybody else in the lead. So Zach Weaver, he was, or excuse me, Adam Weaver, he was qualifying in the number nine position. So he's going to get some bonus points as a result of that one. That's great. Have to do the joker counts to make sure Adam didn't get an extra one in there. Because if he got an extra one, then that would put him out of out of it. It would put him entirely out of contention. So we're going to get the results tallied there for sprint race number one and really figure out after the bonus points how the standings are going to be lined up right now. Listening to Rachel talk about something. Who is that on screen right there in the green shirt? Uh, that's Chris Nanchoff. Okay. Officially unofficial, Nanchoff in the number two position, talking it over with Adam Weaver and Rachel Hart there. I believe those are your top three finishers all on screen. I just I have to believe there's a disagreement with some sort of pass back there, but I don't know that we saw it, so. There we see some of the drivers in sprint race number two. The slow the slow sprint, the slow heat is getting lined up into their carts and they're not slow by any means they just weren't the fast 15. yeah exactly uh, i think we're going to step away for a minute and get those points tallied up excellent we'll be back in just a couple of moments with the green flag flying for sprint race number two
All right, we are back, and we have sprint race number two out there on their qualifying, or not their qualifying lap, their heat in the tires lap uh, before they get racked up for the wave of the green flag. And we have Chase Witt, Ryan Gardner, Brennan Thomas, Katie Wise, Devin Horner, Andy Cook, Shane Transu, Larry Murphy, Chad Squires, David, and Agins. David Agins. There we go. The number 30 cart is Nick Nastoff, Willis Elkins, Derek Raymond, Charles Squires, and Dennis Henry are all of the competitors here in sprint race number two. When we are done with this one, it's going to be a pretty quick turnaround into round number two as the drivers essentially just have to go back down to the randomizer and select which qualifier they'll be in as there's not really going to be that much of a delay between uh, sprint race number two and the qualifying sessions for round number three which is going to be the reverse race so just as we had in sprint race number one this is the same rules apply in this one as the drivers must utilize the joker lane five times during the course of those 15 laps and they are not permitted to use the joker lane on lap one or the final lap and these are 15 lap heat rate or 15 lap sprint race main events so we'll see if the number 18 of chase wit can maintain a position and fight off adversity as we've seen the number one qualifier in sprint race number one get bottlenecked up into traffic not allowing him to end up with that sprint race win so yeah that is definitely um Throwing some stuff into it in this one. As we've seen uh, Chris Nanchoff, Adam Weaver, David Ponce all out there in that first sprint race. I do have a little heads up on um, some points, unofficial points, as of the results of sprint race number one. And we are showing a three-way tie, unofficially showing a three-way tie for the leading leader of the points uh, between Nanchoff, Hart, and Weaver. So we'll be able, we'll see if um, any of these drivers are going to get enough points to challenge the top of the leaderboard. As these drivers, I don't believe, are going to get as many points from the qualifiers and I am correct with that they're going to get half as many points as the rest of the competitors there in sprint race number one as they were the fast 15 they had the most points from qualifying the slow 15 therefore had the least amount of points uh, from their qualifying positions in this B main so there we just heard Jason Lucky the Referee and officials say we are going on the green lights. So that way all of the competitors can see the green and they're just not relying on the start finish line to be able to see the green when they are when they may have their back turned to them. As they have fifteen drivers on the field right now. Um, drivers thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen may have their back turned to the green flag. And it waves. We are racing. Sprint race number two, the B main. I'm not sure what happened as we seen the green flag fly and then we seen the carts stop. So I am not really sure what is going on. There we see one of our staff members going up to assist one of the carts. So it may have been a cart technical malfunction. Uh, I believe that we're going to have to take these carts all the way around another lap and rack them back up in their starting positions before we wave the green flag uh, for the restart of this one. There we were just sitting on board with David Agens. Though I am curious to see how Larry Murphy ends up in this one. I was talking to Larry uh, before we had 
uh, the drivers' meeting today, and you know Larry was just just excited to be here, having a good time on a Friday night racing carts. He couldn't be any happier than than being here tonight. Uh, he's like, nothing much better than this. And I'm I'm a dirt bike guy, so I said, you know, they're dirt bikes. He's like, yeah, that's pretty good too, but. This is pretty good for a 76-year-old. I'm like, 76? Wow. He has definitely got some experience and got some uh, some laps in at various tracks. So we'll see if Larry Murphy on the number 13 cart is able to, you know, salvage some sort of a position. So the green flag has, I believe, officially flown. No, we are sending the carts back down to their grid, and we're going to wave the green flag once again for the start of the B main here in round number one. So there, I'm not sure. Did you get word if that was a technical or what was going on with that? Okay. Okay. Somebody had their feet on the pedals whenever we waved the green flag. So that does cause uh, the carts to malfunction uh, a little bit. So we have the r we have the field racked back up on the grid once again and we are just waiting for the wave of the green flag and there it goes driver in the number two position the number two of Ryan Gardner got a great jump on that green flag and he pulled right up to the rear bumper of the number 18 and Chase Witt so we may have a battle already at the front of the field here in the B main no drivers are permitted to use that joker lane on the opening lap so they are permitted to once uh, they cross the start finish line. Number 22, Dennis Henry, uh, trying to pull a fast one on the field. Jokering on the first lap, yeah. Yeah, jokering on that first lap, and that will be assessed. Uh, I'm a little speechless once again as the field comes to a halt and back to pace once again. So I'm a little bit uh, at loss for words as to what's going on out there on the race course, uh, but we'll get things figured out and the B main will be I successful. I wonder if they were trying to slow him down to penalize him for that, although we're all slowing down now. Interesting. I didn't do it, I swear. <laughs> I was just driving my car and then it just stopped. It still steers. <laughs> it just doesn't go. So we're trying to get something figured out with one of these carts that looks to be the number 15 cart of Derek Raymond having some issues. Um, that would be there at the carousel just before the start straight away. Yeah, Owens are trying to make an assessment of whether it actually is a mechanical issue with the car, um, which the driver obviously thinks that it is. But I think the start stop from the controller was causing a majority of the issues here. I am curious okay. to see if this I is going to be a like full restart or what will be going on if we'll start it after lap two, if we're going to bring the pace cart out. Yeah, same thing. So with two laps under the books, I don't think they're going to want to restart it. They're going to be probably on the lights. He's just got to really make sure that his uh, foot is off that accelerator because that the car will not go when it changes speeds and it thinks that there's a fault on the system. So it's very important that the drivers do not push right. the pedals. There when we the go, green back to racing. As Andy's going to joker right away with the uh, number 12 of Chad Squires. So that puts them up in the front of the field, and they are permitted to do that as it was technically lap two for them. So they could just sneak right into the joker lane there. Yeah, now that we're past that initial lap. Ooh, the number 36 cart just got uh, the door slammed shut on him. That's Shane Transu 
just inside the top 10, had the door slammed on him by the number 24 cart of Devin Horner. Yeah, Devin Shane and David Adkins definitely fighting it out there. We're going to see a slight replay. Is it Adkins, Agins? Adkins, I believe. Okay. Once I get it right, we'll get it right for the rest of the night. So a few <laughs> drivers electing to use the joker lane on that one. And so far it shows uh, Chad Squires as being your overall race leader over Charles Squires. Is that father, son, brothers? Yeah, father, son. I believe possibly grandfather here tonight. Uh, I'm not sure. I did see a third Squires. Yeah. Looking for Larry Murphy. There he is sitting back in 13th place. 76 years old, James. Yeah. He just wants to have fun going fast. Absolutely. Larry. Larry's a great guy. He comes in here. Uh, he's usually waiting at the door when we open up at noon. Comes in to race a couple races. He brings his dog in, too. Good. Yeah. good. Uh, and he's always up for conversation for young drivers, young talent, um, which is one of those personalities we love having around the, the facility. Yeah, I was talking to Larry, and he said it's a little bit of a bummer that there's not as many cars in the parking lot at you know noon, 1, 2 o'clock, as there is you know at 6 or 7 o'clock. But then you have to take into consideration that most people that enjoy – this discipline of sport sure. yeah. work during the day. Yeah, absolutely. And he's also one to ask for a special race if possible. So he doesn't always like being on track with other people. Um, so I usually ask him, like, so Larry, are you doing a race by yourself today, a runner for time, or you want to run race against some people? And uh, he's about a 50-50 either way. It, that's that's, that's going great. straight side by side, always in this turn four. That's the most difficult place to be. So it looks like we have added a lap to account for the initial false start. Absolutely. Right. So with that, it's showing Katie Wise as your leader over David Aggins with Willis Elkins in third and Chad Squires back and forth and Transu uh, rounding out our top five. So this is a uh, this is good racing. You know, I'm, I'm a Larry Murphy fan. I'm, I'm <laughs> you're not supposed to pick sides, uh, but hey. yeah, you're allowed. <laughs> I just want to see him advance into a top 10 finish. That would be great for him. He has raced 178 races at K1 Speed Canton. And we've only been open for a year and a half. That's that's impressive. Everybody's got a little Ricky Bobby in them, and it's good to see Larry Murphy <laughs> want to come out here and go fast. That's, that's, that's spectacular. Uh, the number 12 and 36 battling out, Chad Squires and Shane Transu. Outside, inside. Oh, traffic bit of coming in. Does it come around the Joker? Which that was that one was of the things in the drivers' meeting that they discussed. Is Nick you, Nastoff. You're gonna, yeah. If you're gonna Joker like this, you got to hold the right hand side and wait. For, uh, well, not wait, but you got to be uh, cautious of traffic that is on a flying lap coming from the outside. So about halfway through this, with unknown Jokers for each of the drivers, it's showing David Aggins with the advantage over Katie Wise and Willis Elkins, one, two, and three. But there we see Willis uh, utilizing a joker, lane, joker lap uh, to move up a position in the leaderboard to so second. Now this will be interesting. Does David Joker again? Nope. Da he's going to stay right on his tail, even though he's got traffic right in front of him. David's used a bunch of jokers already in this b inside. Wow. Got it. Wow, what a clean move. That is difficult to do under braking in those conditions, and he, he pulled it off. The number 23 of David Aggins, he looks to be about 20-something years old, give or take. Uh, so he's in his prime of racing, and, you know, he's still learning too, which is great about being that age is you're still learning how to drive these carts. And jokers everywhere coming in, and it's just throwing a big old monkey in the Look mix. Look at that traffic trying to make it around the carousel as they zipper back together. The 30 and Nastoff is that driver that we've seen come into the joker lane and into traffic a couple of times in a row. And, wow, look at this, seven carts all duking over position. You can't say dueling over position. That's one of the things I was up. I, I watch a lot of the Supercross races, which are motocross indoors, and there's an announcer that says that riders are dueling if there's three riders battling on the track. Oh. And I'm, I'm, that's it's, not a that's duel. It's not a duel. It's, two, uh, it's three people, right? Right. So a duel is two people. So if you have more than two, they're just out there duking it out on the track to me. Good distinction. You learn something every day. I, I, being an announcer, you gotta you got to critique the other announcers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
So, so far. I tell you what, though, I'm very impressed at, uh, even though there's a lot of traffic out there, they are racing relatively clean. I know some drivers may refute that, but the way they zippered back together off to the Joker lane, it, quite a feat. And they all those cars were going through one, two, and three together. Um, hard to keep your distance and not bump each other off the track. In your and my defense, James, up here in the box, round number one is and will be the most difficult race for us to announce because of the jokers being thrown in there. Absolutely. So the drivers advance four positions potentially, potentially no positions, or advance, you know, they could go up five positions utilizing that joker. So it's really difficult for us up here in the box to give you guys accurate results that may be viewing on screen. Yeah, we're uh, just 100% relying upon the running order that you're looking at on your screen as well. Exactly. Uh, the one thing that helps, though, we did change this so that it shows the last lap time. At least you know, like, Andy Cook just now took his joker since he's in the 26s. Yep. So Shane Transu, he has been using... Same with Derek Ryman down there in 13th position. He jokered as well. So Shane with a joker on the previous lap, or laps, is putting him on top of the leaderboard with the number 36 cart. Uh haven't figured out which helmet he is. Um, we'll try to get him. There's the number 33 and 24 coming at us. Willis Elkins and Dave, Devin Horner. Um, and then we see Katie Wise utilizing a joker lane to put her back up in the number one spot uh, with just a couple of laps remaining. So this is winding down and winding down fast. So if there's going to be any advances on the leaderboard, we're going to see it happen very soon. And David Ag Agins is throwing his hands in the air. He has oh, no, no power. Trouble. I just watched him. He had his foot depressed on the throttle, and he was going backwards. So I am not sure with what is going on with Aggins as we see a competition yellow come out here on the field or a, a full course yellow come out here on the field to try to assess what is going on with David Aggins' cart. We can see on the dash there that it says wait, so it doesn't have a speed instruction. The car thinks that it's in basically neutral right now. Now, does the race course have sensors all the way around it to know when the carts are inside and outside of bounds? It doesn't, no. Okay. That'd be a cool system to have someday, but not now. I was just wondering, maybe he st stepped out of bounds and his cart shut off, but it's looking like it may be something more severe than that as he has pulled the buckles and starting to run back to the pits as I believe we're going to hold that position on the field for him to get a different cart and... He's, he's helping out our track workers by uh, coming to the car. Yep, so that is exactly what's going on as we're giving him a replacement cart for these last two laps, and he will be staged up, hopefully back in the same position that he was in on the course. So two considerations for this. One is sometimes the fault code on the condition of that car is because of um, using both pedals at the same time. Don't know that for sure because we weren't on board when we came in there. But you have to be careful about stalling out the car because it doesn't want the brake to stay on. So that's a possibility. And the second thing is, I while this kind of maneuver is frustrating to the drivers and it may not be the best situation for racing conditions, it, it does happen. I mean, it, mechanical failures in everyday uh, uh, racing happen. And the benefit here is that you get a different cart instead of having to go back and fix your own stuff. Mechanical problems are part of motorsports. That's right. And I've seen this uh, watching the Pro Motocross series a handful of times over this past season. We've seen a couple of riders that were battling over the championship that had a mechanical failure yeah. that took them out of the championship. So yeah, it can happen. It's devastating when that happens. Happens on two wheels, happens on four wheels, it happens indoors and outdoors. And unfortunately, it happened here, but we got him back in a replacement cart. And it looks like we've already got the transponders adjusted with the accurate cart number that he is currently in. So that was one of my questions uh, coming into this restart was, is the timing and scoring going to be accurate with him, you know, just jumping carts? Yeah, absolutely. Um, quick flip of the switch and we're done. And the other consideration, even though we're going white flag, is the joker is now closed. Correct. So because of mechanical failure and the positions of the cars, the nobody else can joker. Um, even though the white, lap, white, white flag is out anyway. so There we see the red flag at the Jokers signaling that no drivers may enter. And it's pretty much down to this. The 29 cart of Katie Wise is probably going to run away with this one. As we're still battling back here in the hairpin. That's for just outside of the top five. As we see the number 22 cart. Yeah, we got Chad and Shane battling it out. As the checkered flag flies, 
That is how they will cross the field. I'm not sure if Dennis was a lapped driver. Uh, I'm not sure, but it shows him at the end of the leaderboard as he was right in the mix of that thick of riders. But the checkered flag has flown, and we will get the results finalized and tallied at the conclusion of this sprint race number two. And we'll get the points updated for all of our viewers at home and on screen in just a few moments as well as we do have a semi-idea of the scoring coming into this. It's showing now Adam Weaver with some updated uh, points as he is the leader. It showed at one point in time a three-way tie for the race lead, but that was before we had the passing bonuses, the bonuses. assessed. Yep, Adam jumped up significantly with the starting position to the final position. So we will get uh, the B mains points assessed in a couple of moments, but, you know, just for the time being, 30, excuse me, 29 points is our leader at this point in time. Yeah, Adam Weaver is going to gain six points for the bonus on the, his uh, on his execution. Armand, bonus pointing seven. So that is very, very good. Uh, showing Corey Ricker as advancing eight positions in that A main. So th that's, you know, we're just unofficial at this point in time until the points get posted for you guys on screen. Uh, but just looking out off screen, Corey Ricker with some huge bonus points in that A main. That's huge. Yeah, eight points. That's, that's a significant jump. So we're going to take a couple of minutes now after the conclusion of that B main. We're going to send the drivers back down to the paddock and send them back through the randomizer as we have three more qualifiers coming at you in round number two of competition. But this time, the race course is going to be turned around backwards, and these drivers are going to have to contest with something that they may not have ever driven before here at K1 Speed in Canton uh, for the first ever exhibition of speed. There's Katie right in the center of the shot. Katie and her father, PJ. Congratulations to her on uh, winning this last uh, heat. Yeah. There we see Marshall already suited back up and pacing to a cart. He's ready to go. He's ready to hit the race course here in qualifier number one for round number two of competition. Very similar to round number one of competition. Three separate qualifiers, eight laps again, and there will be 10 points assessed to the fastest qualifier of each of the divisions. And so on and so forth down the line. I still but see smiles in the pits. That's good to see. Yep. The difference is this time is the racetrack is going to be turned on in reverse in round number two for the qualifier. Something majority of these drivers have not done before. 38-49 is what these drivers are trying to aim for for fast laps for the day. I haven't seen anybody break into the 38s. The low 39s is all the faster that I have seen. Uh, but we are just sending these drivers through the randomizer at this point in time to get their carts and which qualifier they're going to be competing in in round number two of competition at this point in time. And we'll get qualifier number one uh, racked up into their carts in just a few moments, and we'll get qualifier number one of round two of competition underway. So we're going to take a couple of minutes and get things all set up for the start of round number two.
All right, we are getting qualifier number one, round number two of competition on the track right now. And the difference is they're going backwards. So they're going to come out of the pits and make a hard U-turn and start navigating this course in reverse. And we have used the randomizer to select 10 drivers in qualifier number one. We have Larry Murphy, Katie Wise, Chase Witt, Charles Squires, Chris Nanchoff, David Pons, Marshall Miller, Brennan Thomas, Armand Deligny, and Ryan Gardner all in qualifier number two. In that order is how they're going to be out there on the race course. And 10 points will be allotted to the number one qualifier in this bracket. And some drivers of uh, drawing the short straw uh, coming right off the track from sprint race number two, the B main in round number one and back onto the track in qualifier number one in round number two. I've driven carts before. I mean, I've I mentioned a couple of times I'm a motocross guy, but I've driven these carts before and they are very uh, physically exhausting to try to whip them around the turns. So these drivers are tired at the end of one of the sprints and then coming off the track and then right back onto the track in a qualifier some of their times may not be as good as it could be and what we talked about earlier in the program is a lot of these drivers have not driven this course in reverse but one thing that's going to be you know helpful to us up here in the box is we're not going to toss that joker in so passes on the track are passes for positions and we'll be able to note, a, note that and relay that information back to you guys that are watching with us. I am not sure what the lap times are for reverse, if they're going to be nearly competitive as they were for forwards, as we've seen lap times going forwards in the low, low 39-second range here today. I'm not sure if we're going to see those fast of lap times in reverse, as this is not the driver's normal direction. But I was talking to James, and some of the drivers like to drive it in reverse but that may actually just be because of a change of pace that they may get kind of bored of driving the forward direction a little bit so we toss them in there in reverse and it kind of changes the pace a little bit and brings out the enjoyment back in the sport of karting so some of the drivers liking to go in reverse versus the forward even though it may not be as fast as going forward but there we see Marshall Miller busting out the 40 flat on the previous lap so Prove me wrong that the lap times are just as fast <laughs> going reverse. So that's what I was wondering, James. Is is the lap times? Hey, you're not on. You're not on. Now you are. Thanks. I was wondering if the lap times in reverse are as competitive as they are forwards. It's amazingly similar, isn't it? Very it's, much so. You would think that with some of these sweeping corners, like the carousel being so much faster, that uh, that it would affect the time. But I guess overall distance is really all that matters. This, this is the tricky one right here. When he turned to reverse at turn one, it's. I played with this when I was racing about 60 laps in a, in, in a row, and I just kept trying to turn one differently because of how slow it was, but also because it set you up for the carousel. And uh, the weird thing is, you just have to you have to do the reverse of turn two. You have to go slow into it and then press the throttle about halfway through the apex, because otherwise the car is just too unsettled. How often do you compete? Uh, do you Are you in any leagues or anything? Um, I get to run in the Boost League usually. That's the only competition that I get to see. All the other uh, leagues that we do here are mandated by K1, so I don't jump into those. And like we talked about at the 12 hours of speed, this is, this is a racer's place. doesn't matter if you're yeah. a cart racer if you're a car racer if you race on two wheels you can come here to k1 speed and toss a helmet on and be competitive and have a great time doing it and i also think it's one of the least expensive forms of motorsports you can partake in because the equipment being provided to you and the facility being provided to you you don't have a bunch of entry fees that you would normally see on a weekend you, you know you know how expensive that gets you're preaching to the choir right now <laughs> as i seen my dad's uh wallet just kind of go into the dust a couple of times <laughs> on the weekends as the money just starts Poor to dad. fall out of it. Dads are great for that. You know, they're sacrificing for the, the love of the sport, and that's awesome. I now have 
Uh, well, the love of you and the sport, I should say. I've got two stepdaughters and two uh, children of my own, and my youngest stepdaughter just got a bike, and now she's starting to race. So I'm being the moto dad now too. Yeah. And my two and a half year old son is starting to ride his uh, his Stasic two wheeler with no training wheels, and I just see my life all going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> so it all just gets more expensive from here. It it very much so does, and that's why we have Grandpa Claus. <laughs> Grandpa Claus helps out a whole lot. <laughs> that's great. So they're just out there for qualifiers right now. They're not really racing for positions. They're racing for points as they're trying to get the number one qualifying time, and they are also trying to uh, learn a line. Yeah, that too. Yeah. They're trying to get points. Because uh, you know you know how it is when you go to a brand new track. If you've never seen it before, you kind of guess, is this the quicker way around? You kind of have to feel the car and see if it gives you any results. Is there any way that you can update what's going on on the race course yeah, so we can absolutely. see fastest times so, so far we've got Marshall out there with a 39.5 and that is the fastest that I've seen in the reverse direction I've never seen the reverse direction except for right now so I've seen Marshall now nearing besting his forward direction time and I believe he's the only one of the 39s everybody is for Armand is a 40 zero um and we got Brendan, uh, Brandon, sorry. Uh, there, 40 point the ghost just there broke 40, and Marshall backing up his time. So two sub 40s with David Ponce there at a 40 flat. Looking like they're going to be uh, A main racers in round two of competition. We'll, we'll, uh, We're we'll still early. We'll try to stay on board with this real quick. Um, and let's watch. So this is the fastest part of the circuit in reverse. You're full out. You try to maintain your momentum. And then here's the trick. Look at this left right complex right there and how that turn four and reverse jets out in the middle of your car you've got to go wide there in turn four to set yourself up straight coming into turn number three in reverse that because it's so fast too yes um, and and uh, you do have a little bit of discrepancy in the carts and the grip level that you have sometimes you want to uh just uh, lack of a better term you just want to throw the car through that corner and sometimes you actually want to let off and coast to keep make sure your uh, all the balance on four tires are good before we got competition underway today for the first ever exhibition of speed i had a chance to walk outside and look at the driver's feet when they were coming through the turns and that's all i was looking at yep. was their feet and which feet they were using and when they were using it and i was learning a lot just by observing uh, particularly Marshall Miller and, and Armand, the ghost. Both of those drivers are very smooth, mm -hmm. and you can learn a lot just by watching them, and they both drive their carts extremely different. Mm. Armand is very smooth and almost effortless at going fast, where Marshall, he's like a bulldog harnessed into an electric go-kart. <laughs> he's, he's whipping the steering wheel around. He's jamming on the pedals. Yeah. So he is very aggressive at his driving style versus Armand's smooth and almost effortless driving style. So That's very true. In fact, I've never put that to words before, but you're absolutely correct. When you watch um, Marshall uh, manhandle the car, he throws it into those corners, and Armand is going to be the more smoother guy, coming from a gas cart background, actually. And I was watching the outside sections in the forward direction, and Armand was not using brakes coming into turn number six he was just lifting and then getting back on the throttle where marshall was coming hard into turn six slamming on the brakes and then getting hard back on the throttle coming into seven and eight so it's, driving the cart's different it, so it's amazing that when you look at those times that they're like four tenths off of each other because you would think that that much of a difference in driving the car would make a, like a bigger time difference. i would think that the smoother time would be faster watching yeah all of the motorsports that i've watched smoother is faster but I've watched a lot of uh, Driver 61 on YouTube, and there's a there's a British guy that does a YouTube channel, does a lot about racing, and the smooth line is not always the fastest racing line. Remember I've learned that. Reverse. That's true, and uh, uh, even on a go kart track, with the track being so small, the distance that you travel can be even more important than the smoothness in which you're taking the corners. So we are getting drivers in qualifier number two racked up into their carts down in the down in the staging area, down in the pits, and they will be heading out there on the race course in just a couple of moments. There we see uh, some of our staff members assessing some of the carts and getting them 
back foot on the chargers. Yeah, getting foot pedals, foot pedal extenders. So oh, you can reach the pedals better. That must be one of our younger competitors in this one. Yeah, let's see. Ryan Gardner? Is that who that's going to be? I see in the 28 machine. That's what we're showing. Yeah. So he is one of our younger competitors. Is there any way we can see what his age is by chance? 2007. 2023. 16? Yeah. Small 16. So these drivers just getting uh, all suited in, buckled in, and they will be heading out on the racetrack in just a moment for the start of qualifier number two. Eight laps reverse direction, trying to get that top qualifying time in group number two. It's randomized, so you may have a whole bunch of fast drivers in one particular qualifier, and another qualifier may have a bunch of slower drivers with one fast driver in. So it's all random. Yeah, and then we have our updated point standings. Adam Weaver jumping to the top because of his performance in the first position racing. Very, very good. Brendan Thomas in second with Katie Wise in third. And pretty tight inside the top five with only five points separating first through fifth. And the top ten separated by less than nine points. So the boost challenge at the end of this exhibition of speed here at K1 Speed Canton will definitely be the deciding factor as there are 30 bonus points up for grabs if you do not use that boost button at all in round number three of competition. But if you use it, your bonus points come away. You could potentially get no bonus points or you can get 30 bonus points in round number three of competition. And the passes are not going to be affected in round number three of competition. You're not going to get any bonus points for making passes like you did in rounds one and two. It's just bonus points based on how many boosts are left. So here in qualifier number two, round two of comp competition, we've got Nick Nastoff, Adam Weaver, Willis Elkins, Andy Cook, Rachel Hart, Derek Raymond, Bob Sibilla, Zach Harmon, Corey Ricker, and Giovanni Blackerby. You said Giovanni was one of the drivers that just recently graduated to the full-size cart from yep. the junior cart. Yep, absolutely. And he's still competing in the junior league um, because you stay in that league for the entire calendar year, you know, January through December. And but, uh, but he's eligible to drive adult carts. I was saying that these are eight-lap uh, qualifiers in round two. We're showing nine laps on the board. But that nine laps is just for the opening lap till they come back to the chart start finish line and it's eight continuous qualifying yeah. laps great great point because they leave the pits immediately touch the climbing line and then this is becomes their warm-up and this will be their first timed lap well it's going to register sometimes obviously but they're not going to be cognizant or they're not going to be representative of their actual racing speed correct if one of the drivers off to the side there, I think that was Adam Weaver. Yeah, he was looking for some empty track space. And that's worth noting that he was over on the side of the track, but he wasn't waving his arms. That's the difference the marshals know that uh, there's a cart problem versus something that the driver is doing uh, on purpose. We see it in various uh, disciplines of motorsport that drivers in qualifying will allow the rest of the field to go go by. So they have clear real estate, and they are unaffected so they can throw down a clean, fast lap. We see that very, very often in motorsports. Very smart to do because you don't want to be impeded by the guy in front. You definitely don't want to be staring at a bumper while you're trying to set the single fastest lap you can. On board with Sonic and Rachel Hart so far with the number one qualifying time in group number two. And we'll see if we can follow Rachel as she comes through the reverse of turn four. Aha. Let's see where she slings that car. This is very interesting. We have Rachel Hart and Adam Weaver both here in qualifier number two. And Adam Weaver is our current points leader, if I'm not mistaken. And Rachel Hart also sitting up there in the top of the leaderboard for the points. So there may be a little bit of strategy going on 
in a in this qualifier where Rachel may want to stay above Adam Weaver to get those points to try to give her a couple extra bonus points. We had numerous discussions when we were outlining the point system for this event about what people would do to sandbag if if they wanted to and if they would want to. Um, as Adam is showing, okay, waving his hand but telling him it's okay. Interesting. Well, just going to get a gap and keep the tires warm, I guess. Doesn't seem to be an issue now other than getting a gap. Um, so you, that's what we were talking about with the point system is are people going to want to sandbag so that they can try to get bonus points for the positions gained or would they want to sandbag so they can win the B main because there are is prize money for winning the B main. But the way the point system is that when we find the laid out, we think or we strategize that most people are not going to want to do that because it's just too unknown. There's a lot of drivers with very close times. If you try to hit a certain time frame, you may not land where you need to land and very very plus good points the the third round is the biggest uh variable to the whole thing there we're sitting on board with giovanni one of our youngest competitors of the day for the first ever exhibition of speed here at k1 speed can and he's sitting about the 30 excuse me about the 41 and a half lap times that's been about his average fast lap time in the reverse direction is about a 41 and a half so he's trying to uh, break into the 40s and try to try to get into this a main that's his goal i would have to imagine this is probably the first time he's run reverse i i think he's done it in the junior carts but uh i don't know if he's run the adult before i guess at least he's had exposure to how the how the circuit runs in the back direction Zach Harmon is not the ghost. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to get that corrected, sorry. There we see, still see Rachel Hart with the number one qualifying time here in qualifier number two of round two of competition as she is clicking off another lap. Overall, the number one spot on the race course. Thirty-nine point three excuse me, 39.694 for Rachel Hart. It's about a half a second faster than Adam Weaver's best time. I'm still somewhat surprised that we've got this many people in the 41s. I, I figured we were going to have some people who were more off in line of the 42, 43s. So good job to these competitors uh, adapting quickly. That was another point I was getting ready to make. They're really learning this course and running consistent lap times in the reverse direction, something that they may not be used to doing and we are nearing the end here of qualifier number two round two of competition and white flag flies as we see Rachel Hart trying to get one more clean lap out there try to best that 39.69 yeah of your top two you've got obviously the top six are all in the 40s but um, for all intents and purposes you've got Adam with a 41.1, and then everybody else has got a three tenths, four tenths gap on them. So Rachel and Adam in good, good position for this qualifier. And we already have qualifier number three figured out. Those drivers already know which carts they're going to be in, and they are probably making their way out of the paddock and into the pits, um, getting themselves ready for their upcoming qualifying session. Checkered flag has flown, and we see Rachel Hart besting her best time with a 39.5 and that's the best one of this group by far and since we're on board with whoa G a little bit of check since Just we're on board with Giovanni good job to him fourth position in this qualifier out of nowhere Adam Weaver busting out the 39.77 so that's the second fastest time in this qualifying session and that is one of the fastest times we've seen in the reverse direction as well We'll see qualifier number three. We'll see if Salerno can pull a couple of moves in this one. Using the Joker lane to cut out, go back into the pits. Yep. And we will get qualifier number three of round two of competition uh, racked up, suited up, and into their carts in just a couple of moments. And we will continue to get the points tallied up from 
the qualifier number one of round two and get those added to some of the driver's point totals as the points are going to continue to change all throughout the evening as every race, every time these drivers are on the track, the points are going to get affected. So our staff is very busy keeping up with that. Mad props to the K1 Speed staff tonight. They are just... They always rise to the occasion. We did a 12-hour race six months ago, and they, uh, lack of a better word, they impressed me. I don't know what better way to say, but uh, they're just hustling tonight as well. They always got to charge the cars and get them back out there. A couple of the same staff members that I seen from earlier in the year, some Absolutely. new staff members. Absolutely. New mechanic I seen. Yeah, yep. If, uh, if everything runs well, then he'll he'll look great, and if anything's wrong, then <laughs> bring the complaints to me. <laughs> As these things are not maintenance-free uh, machines, we were talking about uh, this may be one of the cheapest forms of motorsport that you can get into. You don't have to worry about maintaining these vehicles. Yeah, we, we do that for you, and if you've ever come to a Saturday afternoon and seen an arrive and drive session, you'll realize how much work it takes to maintain a fleet of 36 cars. I was uh, asking the mechanic, like, what kind of tire pressure do you set the tires to? Because I just happened to watch him uh, mount up a tire. And he's like, 25, I believe, for the adult and 22 for the youth. Or I may have it backwards. Uh, you're 25 for rears, 23 for fronts. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's what it is. Um, just implemented a new TPM, uh, TPMS monitoring system as well. We don't have the graphic for it tonight. But really? Yeah, so we saw in the 12 hours where we're monitoring all the batteries. We're yeah. now monitoring the tire pressures on every car. And what kind of swing will we see the tire pressures go through? Not a lot, actually. I expected it to be more. Um, you get a couple of degrees in temperature and only about a pound and a half, maybe two pounds of pressure raised during a race. That is very, very surprising. I would have, you know, expected 15, 20, 30 degrees in temperature difference and probably 5 PSI would have been my guess. Yeah, I mean, at least on the internal temperature readings that we get, maybe surface level might be a little higher, but... Yeah, I was surprised. Very good. And we are getting group number three, qualifier number three of round two of competition all racked up in their carts, and they're getting their carts turned on right now. And they'll be heading out there on the course in just a moment. Uh, the ten drivers in this one, we've got Tristan Hartong, David Aggins, Shane Transu, Corey Salerno, David, excuse me, Dennis Henry, Brendan Squires, P.J. Manny Penny, Mitch Shannon, Chad Squires, and David Horner competing in qualifier number three. All right, we have the carts back on course for qualifier number three, the final qualifier. And after this, we will take a couple of minutes and get all of the results tallied from each of the qualifiers and get the point totals assessed as well before we get sprint races number one and two underway. And in the reverse direction, we've seen some pretty uh, competitive lap times versus the forward direction in the mid-39 second range. 
We've got some pretty fast drivers in this one as well. We've seen David Aggins in, I believe, the uh, B main of the previous round having some di having some difficulties, but ending up doing all right as we see some of the drivers just getting a couple of laps in. Going in outside, around turn number five in reverse, and back down into turn number four in reverse. I believe that is the number 11 cart of Chad Squires that we were just monitoring on screen, but now we're on board with David Aggins as he is making his way through turn number one in reverse and back across the start finish line and into the fastest section of the racetrack in the reverse direction around the carousel in reverse and he will be making his way outside. And there we're taking a look at the number eight of PJ Manny Penny. He is coming back inside and through number turn number four in reverse and he's making a pass on one driver. That's the number 16 of Mitch Shannon. He's still trying to get his bearings in the reverse direction. But sitting on board with PJ Manny Penny, he's gonna click off another lap and he's got about a mid Mid the top lap time in qualifier group number three. There we see Salerno busting into the low 41s. We haven't seen any drivers get into the 40s yet in qualifier group number three. And therefore, we haven't seen any drivers break into the 39s in this qualifier section as well. We're about halfway through it. And there we see Salerno finally breaking into the 40.8 second lap time range. That'll be the best of this one on in cart number 31. We're on board with David Aggins right now. He is going to come across the finish line and click off another lap. And that one will not be one of his fast laps. Welcome. Welcome. I'm up here in the box with Marshall Miller. Um, did you slide into some DMs when you were texting people when you were down there in the uh, in the pits? Uh, music and texting. Okay. Yeah. All right. I was just wondering because we've seen you down there texting and getting ready to drive, and we were uh, need to address some uh, some rules here at K1 Speed. But I'm glad to have you up here in the box. Uh, yeah. Marshall Miller joining us up here in the box. Uh, how's the track out here today? Fun. Fun. And I was talking to James. He was saying that some of the drivers elect to drive the track in reverse versus forwards. Which is your preference? Ooh. Reverse. Reverse? Reverse. Just because it's different and it's something you yeah. don't normally do? I love the S turns outside. You have to take it completely different. Very, very cool. <coughs> and what is your experience on four wheels? Is it just racing carts or have you raced cars before? Just carts. Just carts? Yep. Um, and how old are you? 19. 19. So when did you start racing carts? Ooh. I think a year ago. Just here at K1 Speed? Okay. So I just was curious to know how you got into the sport. Uh, just on a whim one time, just coming here and enjoying it, and then just never left. I've always loved racing, but this is my starting point. Now, do you do any virtual racing or any uh, sim racing? Sadly, no, I don't have enough uh, computer for it. It, it does take quite the computer to get involved with sim racing, but I could see you in your driving style really excelling in sim racing, um, but it's it's a big investment to get into. Uh, so what are your takes of this event of the day as we see you not at the top of the leaderboard as far as points? Um, that first, uh, first round, it was going your way, but then uh, it wasn't. Uh, so I'll tell you what happened there. I forgot I had a joker. Because I was kind of lost. I didn't know if I did five or four or, yeah, so. You had one more that you could have used. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you let 15 more. seconds out there on the racetrack. Yeah. Uh, that that makes that makes perfect sense. That's why if I add up my points, it should be however you want, whoever you want to give third to, which Katie's at third with 25. I'm at 25 points now. So whether you want me to swap or just give me four. <laughs> 
Well, I'm glad to have you up here, Marshall, and I'm not going to keep you too much longer as we are already on qualifier number three, and I could imagine with the time that you laid down in your qualifier that you will be in sprint race number one. So yes. I'm going to send you uh, back down to the pits, and it was great having you up here in the box, and best of luck to you through the rest of the night. Is there any, uh, do you have any sponsors that you want to give a shout out to or anybody that you want to thank for, uh, for helping you and bringing you here to the races? myself your back pocket yeah my back pocket and your job during the week yes yes <laughs> all right man it was great having you up here marshall miller joining us up here for a quick interview and i'm going to send him back down to the pits uh for his sprint race number two thank you sir Wrapping up there with the final qualifier session, we see David Aggins with the fast time there on the previous lap. And so far in this one, David Aggins, I believe he will have the fastest time over Corey Salernos. So Marshall was filling my shoes. Did he did he do an okay job? Is he is he hired or am I fired or He's got some room to improve on. Okay. All right. Good. You're, you're still solid up here. We'll keep James for another couple of races. I don't think you're going to go anywhere. He's quiet but uh, aggressive on the, under the helmet, that's for sure. He is a very, very good driver and a very unique driving style. I like the fact that you asked him about the sponsors, um, which is obviously th what drivers get trained to do, right? Um, the cool thing about go-karting is I guess the, the cost is not something that requires a sponsorship. I guess that's a, that's a good and a bad thing at the same time. Touche. So it was kind of cool that he didn't have necessarily somebody besides himself foot the bill. So yeah, I know in, in the motocross world, there are sponsors that get thrown around everywhere for yeah. all sorts of different parts and accessories. So some of these drivers, they may race cars, and there may be some you know helmet companies that may toss him a toss him a skid lid. You never know. Maybe after tonight, he'll get picked up. He he's impressive. I'll tell you that. Um, we are still waiting to get the points tallied up from all of the qualifiers and get those totaled into the overall points. But we will get uh, sprint race number one staged up uh, probably five minutes or so. We'll get uh, sprint race number one all taken care of. And these sprint races are going to be different than they were in round number one of competition. Round number one of competition, we had 15 laps with five of them being joker laps. Now we've got 20 laps of racing, actual racing 20 laps, but it's going to be 10 laps in the forward direction and 10 laps in the reverse direction in that order. And we're going to have a competition yellow halfway through to switch these drivers around. Have you ever seen a race where they did that? No, but I have seen a race that was entirely restarted with a brand new gate drop halfway through the race. And that really threw me for a ringer when I watched it because the first 15 minutes of the race was pretty much pointless at that point in time. If everybody's yeah, lined up right. on a 40-man gate, what's the point in even racing the first 15 minutes if it didn't matter? You know, probably. So this is a little bit different as they'll be making passes through the field in each of the 10-lap forward and reverse directions, and whenever they whenever the competition yellow comes out, the field will just bottleneck up a little bit, but they'll still be in the same positions. Exactly, yeah. So they're going to still race for a position. They can race to the line at the end of lap 10, and then that's where they um, uh, reverse direction. So um, I got a call from pit control. Let me be right back. No problem, and we will be back in about five minutes or so with the start of sprint race number one, round number two of competition here at K1 Speed Indoor Karting for the first ever exhibition of speed.
and we're back. I was just doing the test thing that you were just mentioned. Of do, oh. do we are we able to turn did up our microphones and will it turn the? Uh, did it work? No, I did oh. that. Uh, nope, still on. Okay. All right, <laughs> just doing some demos up here in the uh, in the booth. Uh, we are getting Come on, Derek. We're more professional than that. <laughs> we are getting the uh, the drivers' carts selected and them racked up for the start of sprint race number two right yeah. now. Took an extra second to get the, the times consolidated, so we got the, the fast heat running first. Uh, we've talked about this before, and I'll mention it again that I'm excited to see what this is going to be like. So the ideally, this is what we expect to happen. This is what the drivers have been briefed on, um, and that is to run the regular race forward direction. They can race to the line at the end of the ninth lap, so basically when we start 10, and then the pace car is going to pick up the leader, and he's going to use the joker lane to reverse the direction of the race. Now, he may get uh, two laps under caution, so you may see 22 laps on the timing system. Not sure whether we'll have 21 or 22, but we just want to make sure everybody is grouped back up together so that we can uh, send them to the green flag. The pace car is supposed to pull off in the joker lane, and it's going to be up to the leader to lead the field back to green in a organized and smooth acceleration motion. That's the thought. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> That's thought the whole plan right there. Uh, say scoring is same as it was in round number one of competition with 15 points going to the number one finisher and one point down the line. Uh, so on and so forth with bonus points being added to drivers that advance through the field from their finishing or from their starting to their finishing position. So is that Giovanni right there? That's Giovanni. He is just a little kid. Yeah. Is he here with dad or is he just here driving um, with yeah. himself? Dad and mom. Yep. I saw them both down there. And they're just spectating. And driver coaching and uh, everything. Yeah. They're here to support the kid. That's awesome. Um, uh, we can find, I think they're sitting right at the table there is that we just panned over. That is a very, very good point that you made earlier in the program, James, that uh, carding here at K1 Speed is probably the least expensive way for people to go and enjoy motorsports on the weekends or even during the week. It is, yeah. And we love the fact that people make this the family event. So. Seven. And being an being an arrive and drive facility, uh, you have helmets for anybody that may come in off the street. You've got helmet socks. You've got everything that a driver may need to come yep. out of their car yeah, and into cart. Yeah, in fact, on the left hand side of your screen, you're looking at the junior helmets that are extra smalls. Now, are the choose from viewpoints? Are those basically onboard cameras that uh, drivers can rent? And there, there will be some uh, drivers who use those tonight. They record those back into the uh, pits we pop in the dock that prints out a qr code they take that with their uh, phone scan it and download the video i'm pretty sure pj manny penny has had the last or next to last pick in the last couple of times that he has went to the randomizer so yeah he's uh, at the, he's the bottom of the 15 driver so he's just above mid-pack i think that was the same way that it was in round number one of competition but there we see updated uh points as of right now and it, I don't want to count him out of the mix but Dennis Henry uh, he's got a long way to make up <laughs> needless to say uh, but Adam Weaver, yeah, Rachel Hart Armand Deligny and Chris Nanchoff all with but, over 30 points but uh, glad to have all these guys here we don't don't want to overstate that understate that uh, which way you want to say it bad. but just so appreciate the fact that guys who maybe haven't raced this track before, exactly. haven't been to a KM Speed, whatever, it are, came tonight. I, I think if you look at our field, we're about split 50-50. 50% of our field are regulars where they come here and they compete in leagues, and then the other half are people who are just coming for either disciplines, other disciplines, or uh, for the first time. I am pretty sure that Marshall <laughs> Miller had, he definitely did have an onboard camera on his helmet, in addition to the GoPro that we have viewing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that his onboard on his helmet is one of those Insta360 cameras where it's going to give a forward and backwards view. Awesome shots. Have you seen one of those yet? I have. Um, I want one. Yeah. They're very cool. It is amazing that the field of view is, or is it completely 360 degrees because the lens actually merges with the other lens. They put three lenses in the front, three lenses in the back, and then they merge all that data together. Uh, you and I are kind of computer nerds anyway, so yeah. we can appreciate that. 
And but it makes a spectacular uh, visual. I've been thinking about those Insta360 cameras and with them being able to process the data in real time in which it does, can individual users view different camera angles at the same time out of the same camera? Considering it's taking images all the time. Yeah, I'm not What's sure. Going? I know <laughs> I know when you... Uh, are you talking about like if you were streaming the device? So therefore, if somebody at home had access to the Insta360 camera, they could pan around and watch whatever that they wanted to watch yes. in real time. Yes. The, the, f the final video can be uploaded on YouTube. In fact, our channel is going to be doing that for Rachel's race. She did it in California, um, where on the YouTube channel, you can still pan and tilt wherever you want to go. That is yeah. incredible. Yeah, and that, that technology is coming. It's coming quick. And <laughs> my thought to piggyback off of that was in sporting events, football, NASCAR racing, motocross, whatever, you can have Insta360 cameras set up around the facility, and then you yourself, being a viewer at home, can watch whatever your, you want. Yeah. your racer. If you want to watch your racer. I bet they're working on that technology as we speak. I brainstormed that, and I thought that would be incredible with that technology. So here they are. They're heading out there on the track. They'll probably head out there in the forward direction and then utilize the joker lane. No, they're running their 10 laps in forward first. Yep, we'll still okay. go normal grid. So they're going to be racked up in the normal grid, 15 drivers. And then at the halfway point, we will have the competition caution come out and the pace car will come out and switch the drivers from forward direction to reverse direction. We're getting there. Nearing the end of round number two of competition here for the first ever exhibition of speed at K1 Speed Canton. Uh, drivers are just out there on their yellow flag, yellow light lap right now before they make their way to the staging grid. Well, Marshall's going to take, yep, a couple of drivers are going to take this from Joker. It's cold outside right now. I don't know if you stepped out there, but it's starting to get a little bit chilly outside, so I don't blame some of these drivers for not wanting to go outside. <laughs> Especially if they've got shorts on like I do. <laughs> There we see Marshall getting staged up. He's got one of the more flamboyant helmets, as does Rachel Hart in karting that we see racing with us tonight. A couple of drivers bringing their own helmets, a couple of drivers using the Arrive and Drive helmets. Uh, what brand, do you mind me asking, are the helmets that you have equipped here? We have AGVs or something along those lines. I'm drawing a blank. I caught you off guard. Yeah. I'm good at asking it, those it'll, peculiar questions. It'll come to me. Did you ever figure out what cells are running in uh, the batteries? Are they no, 18650s, 26650s? The that I don't know. Stuff I got it. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I should have done my homework so that I was prepared for tonight. So we're getting the drivers all racked up in this one. We've got Marshall Miller, Rachel Hart, Adam Weaver, Armand DeLigny, David Ponce, Corey Ricker, Chris Nanchoff, Giovanni Blackerby, Andy Cook, Brendan Thomas, David Aggins, Corey Salerno, Katie Wise, PJ Manny Penny, and David me, and Brendan Squires are all of the drivers in A main round number two. So like in round one, we are gonna let the drivers go on the green lights, not necessarily the green flag, as we have some drivers there we see um, with their back turned to the finish line flaggers, so they're going to have to be going off of the lights to let them know when to punch it, Ethel, and get going. So we're just getting all the drivers out there on the course right now, and we'll get that green flag waving in just a moment for the start of round number two of competition for the sprint races, the A main lined up on the track right now. Who's going to make a jump for the front? Who's going to take advantage of this mid-race direction change? Here's what I have seen, is David Pons is wicked fast forward. He is by far the fastest driver that we've had here in the forward direction. Marshall Miller, is he, he's no slouch in the forward direction. I believe he's the second or third fastest lap time that we've had in the evening in the forward direction, but he locks down the reverse direction's lap time and by a considerable margin. So I want to say that this is Marshall Miller's main to lose, but we're still early in this one as he does have the pole position and he has a couple of positions over Adam Weaver, who we've seen sneak his way into the number one position in the A main in round number one. 
Yeah, no, no joker lane for Adam to take advantage of this time. But Right, and he was able to get many, many bonus points, which put him about four, maybe five points ahead of the rest of the field. Oh, that's a late jump. A Adam got – looks like Marshall was asleep at the wheel. We got Adam who's already gained a spot, but is he going to be able to hold it? Oh, Rachel Marshall is pushing, him, pushing him to the side. How are they going to pan out here? So they're all bottom. Adam's trying to up. hold on to that second position. Mar or Rachel just, just right, right behind him. Marshall's. It Marshall's looks like they'll, yeah, they'll be able to maintain gap as they go outside now. The cool All track right. temperature is going to affect grip level, especially in this corner coming out of the high-speed corner. Wow, Marshall Miller has already opened up about a four to five cart length advantage over the battle for the number and two what's spot. what's happening to Armand? Looks like he got swallowed up there. Armand on the number 36 cart leading that group, but it was way off the pace of where he started. We're going to see Take several. that back. He's still running in fourth. Okay. It just looked like he had gone backwards at that corner back there, but it looked like maybe just traffic. He has a couple of carts between him and David Pons, but Pons has been very aggressive in the forward direction. Like He has been extremely fast in the forward direction, so I look to see if David Pons can move up a couple of positions, maybe inside the top three before we switch around things to the reverse direction, and then... It, it, I'm not really sure what's going to go on when we switch around things to reverse, except for Marshall was going to go fast. Yeah, they have to keep in the back of their minds that they're going to be um, losing any kind of gaps that they build up. Now, they obviously don't want to go backwards, but if you maintain a, 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 a gap to the person in front of you, that will be erased once we go the opposite direction. But Marshall is out there with enough of an advantage that he can ride or he can drive his own his own event at this point in time as we see his brake foot just kind of hanging out. He's not. I, so I asked him about this the other day. So we noticed this during Boost League, and I said that he put it up there because he was showing that he's not intimidated. And he says, no, my brake wasn't working. I said, oh. Oh. All right, well. <laughs> all right. I, did, I didn't believe that it was because we, we have carts that have brakes. But. So we see Armand is still running in that number four position, but he has just turned a 40 flat, which is one of the faster times that we have seen in this one. But there's David Pons into the 39s. And we'll see David Pons starting to pick away at Armand's slight advantage as we see Marshall Miller with a huge lead now as he is going out of the doors and around turn number five, turn six, what and What is Rachel going to gonna do as they come into the double hairpin? Will she be able to make a move, or is she just going to remind Adam that she's right there, and she's just going to stay right bumper to bumper? Rachel Hart is not giving Adam Weaver an inch and into the carousel, and they are just going to push each other down the start straight away and see who can go into turn number one harder. And Hart with a great line alongside Adam Weaver, but is not going to. It's opening the door for Armand there. Exactly. With Hart not able to make the move, that allows Armand to pull up alongside Hart. Sitting on board with uh, Chris Manchoff. Yep. Which I believe Atkins is right on his tail. He's the one who just appeared in that shot on the left-hand side. We, oh, neck and neck coming out the straightway. You can see him just Manchop's in the corner. going to close the door on the left-hand side. Marsha Miller, though, uncontested in this one. He didn't get a good jump, but he has maintained an advantage over the rest of the field, per, turning in some pretty good uh, turns at the beginning of the first lap. He stretched it out now. And now we've got Chris here who's in the line of traffic with the three guys behind him. He's got a tiny little bit of a gap, but he was able to hold off um, Corey Salerno, who's all, who uh, overtook David Atkins on that last lap. Sitting on board with Andy Cook right now. Looks like a Friday night drive out there. He's just outside of our top five. He's got a lot of ground to make up to try to make a couple of passes to get inside that top five, but that is... That advantage is going to be, or that disadvantage is going to be wiped clean here in about three or four laps as the competition yellow will be coming out. Yeah, and we do have 22 laps on the board for those two yellow laps that are going to occur. Adam now just pulling out about a cart length difference between him and Rachel. Nope, she closed the gap right on that straightaway. Adam's got to make sure he keeps this nice and clean. All four or five cars right in line, nose to tail, as they go through the outdoor section. Armand able to reel in the number 35 cart of Rachel Hart. Armand was down about three to four cart lengths 
earlier in this A main, but he has since pulled that gap back to naught, and he is all over the rear fender, the rear bumper of Rachel Hart, who is all over Adam Weaver. So it's a three-way battle for the number two spot with the number 20 of David Ponce just outside of striking distance on those three riders, drivers just ahead of him. Almost a five-car train. As we still see that huge gap that uh, that, uh, that Marshall has pulled out from the rest of the field. We did see one driver bump into Armand. I believe I believe it was David Pons bumping into Armand, but no passes were made. And Andy's just got a good view of this battle going on in front of him. He's just cruising right behind him, watching them battle it out. He knows that that gap will be erased here shortly. And there Armand has opened up a little bit between him and Pons, but he is still not quite able to make the move on Rachel Hart, who is sitting there on the bottom step of the box. And we are nearing that halfway point for the competition yellow to come out. And Armand gonna at the inside. Armand's going to make a move. Is Rachel going to be tug it back? Yeah, over the under. That was a great line by Armand, but it was not able to seal the deal and make the pass stick. So he's going to have to try to run that line in again in the next lap. So he can see where he is pulling on Rachel Hart a little bit. Armand is the ghost back there in the number four position, sitting ahead of the number 20 of David Pons. Who's got, he's got some company. Corey Ricker starting to reel in the number 20 of Pons. So that's a great battle going on on track. And Andy Cook on the number 25 cart is starting to pick away at those drivers as well. So you can say that it's a five-way battle for the number two spot on the track. If any of these drivers were to make a huge mistake, they would fall right back through the pack. All right, and for the very first time, our pace car is going to roll. He's going to go to the straightaway to make sure that all these cars can race through the 10th tenth, tenth lap, and then we're going to pick up Marshall Miller, who's the leader of the race. Let all these guys past the start finish line that's going to be a midway checkered flag and we will slow the field down what a great shot from our pace car driver tonight great shot as we see the number 19 of marshall miller bumping our pace card a little bit just having some fun <laughs> <laughs> owen malley our our pace car driver tonight has a lot of gas karting experience so if there's anybody who can drive the pace car tonight this is the guy there we see adam weaver just uh talking to our current race leader Marshall Miller he's having a good time it's Friday night under the lights Rachel Hart is still competitive back there in the number three spot and as they currently run back to the rest of the field the number 36 of Armand Deligny in the number four spot David Pons in fifth sixth Corey Ricker seventh Andy Cook eighth is Chris Nanchoff ninth is Corey Salerno tenth is David Aggins the number 11 spot is Giovanni Blackerby the number 12 position Brendan Squires the number 13 position is Brendan Thomas the number 14 spot is P.J. Manny Penny. He's not made very many passes at this point in time. No, he He's, hasn't. He started and is currently running about where he started. Um, and then we are wrapping things up with the number 15 in the number 15 position of Katie Wise. What a great shot from our pace car driver tonight. It looks like we planned on turning him around a different way during the driver's meeting than we actually turned him around in reality, but... All that matters is they're going backwards now. Yeah, I think they're good, so they're still going to complete this lap, and Pace Car is going to take them all the way through to the Joker, um, making sure that the field is all packed up. Now, this the racing steward, Jason, has the authority to wave off this start if he doesn't see that it's nice, clean acceleration from the, from the leader and everybody else. That's going to be tough to do. Everybody's going to be chopping the bit. Everybody's going to be stop and go. We'll see how this, how this rolls out. But the idea is to get them rolling back to start finish line. They cannot pass until they finish or across the start finish line. I'd be willing to bet that the pace cart is going to go through the outdoor section and then pull into that middle area after they come back inside and then we'll be running single file back down to the start finish line for the restart or the start of the second half of this a main race control is saying make sure everybody is packed up which it looks like we are and this is where our pace car is going to pull off to the side the field is now belonging to marshall miller as he hopefully smoothly accelerates the field And as we wait for the green flag, 
Green flag is back out. I think that was a fair restart. I think that was excellent. I hear some banging of some barriers back there, but everybody's going to make it through. So in the reverse direction, Marshall Miller has been exceptionally fast, and I anticipate him to pull away in this reverse direction, but he's already got some company. Adam Weaver not letting him go. As we are early into this restart, Rachel Hart, Armand, and David Pons through the top five. As we got some side-by-side -side action here between the 21 and the 12. Battling for the, uh, what, 11th and... Uh, Probably 12th and 13th. 12th and 13th. Oh, okay, gotcha. And there we are racing clean in the reverse direction. And we see Marshall still holding on to that race lead over Adam Weaver, but it is not by much at all as Rachel Hart is right there. Armand Deligny is right there. The gap is not the same from Marshall Miller this time around. The field is right on his tail. I was anticipating him to stretch it out very, very quick, but Adam Weaver's keeping him honest, but he just got a bump from Rachel Hart. He's not really happy about that. On board with Andy Cook, obviously, but then also right in front of us is Chris Manchoff in eighth position. These guys were these guys were separated at the beginning of the of the heat as well. Here and all they're gonna be nose to tail just like just like our front five is here and David Pond's looking on the inside. He's uh, Harmon's gonna be able to hold that position. All kinds of bumping and grinding going out there on the race course, but Rachel Hart is glued to Adam Weaver's rear bumper, and they're coming into turn number four. Rachel Hart trying to set herself up to make the move on Weaver, but just cannot put the front end. And show As Armand is going to take advantage of that. Exactly. Going to take the outside. Oh, what's oh. Rachel going to do? That was oh, a hard, hard lick. Hard lick for Rachel Hart in turn number one reverse. Uh, she She's just got the do door spots there. double slam shut from Armand Deligny and Adam Weaver were both just cut her line off and she had nowhere to go but into the barricade. It just looked like Adam was having a hard time with the grip going through the reverse of turn four. That is what gave her the extra momentum. We'll see what happens here this time around. Is Yeah, he has the same issue as David Pons is going to try to go wide and then maybe undercut through two or he'll stay right in line with him. Armand Deligny really working his way through the field. He has moved up to the number two spot. Yeah, that was a huge game for him, taking advantage of that. We know Rachel Hart was sitting in the number two position in the points, and with that huge mix-up. They're going to go two wide for two rows. What's, what's going to happen here? Adam Weaver was our current points leader coming into this one by a substantial margin, and he is sitting back in the number three position and I'm not sure what his qualifying time was, if it was up towards the top or not. He may end up not getting any bonus points or very few bonus points as a result of his current finishing position. Adam having to run the outside line to that, but that, that means that David Pons is looking to the inside. The top two have checked out altogether from the rest of the field. It looks like Armand starting to reel in Marshall. Yeah, as we're now having a competition between Rachel and Chris. Looks like Rachel's got her bearings back. She's all over Corey Salerno, but just ahead of Chris Nanchoff. So that's a great battle inside the top 10. But Rachel Hart, that's a tough break, though. She lost about five positions as a result of that bang with the wall. David Pons is really going to push Adam through this corner. Let's see what happens here. Into turn number four in reverse, having to set that corner up a little bit different than nope. they would in the forward direction. If David Pons is not careful, he was, okay, he held on to the position, but Corey Ricker was right on his tail, and he's going to take advantage of that trying to pass Adam. But Look at Armand go, reeling in Marshall Miller and making it, making it happen fast. He's got about four laps to try to work his way up to the rear fender of Marshall Miller, and he's there. It's whether he can make the move, as you can see them just in the corner of our shot. They're going into turn number four in reverse and heading into turn number three in reverse. And both of those drivers are hooked it up out there on the race course and battling over the race lead. There we see them coming across the finish line, Marshall Miller and Armand Deligny. Out of nowhere, we see Armand with some smooth lines. 
and he has caught up to Marshall Miller, duking it out over the number one spot. Laying down big double rubber tracks on the side as Marshall went on the, on the defensive on that, but he was able to maintain the position. Some hard racing going on. This is definitely a lot tighter competition than what we saw in the regular direction. I guess the good news is that if, uh, if you're late on the throttle, you've got your neighbor behind you to bump start you out of the corner. You are correct there. Good to see Rachel Hart rebounding after those mis that mistake earlier in this A main. She has worked her way back up to the number five, six position on track. And she may not. Ah, she is still right there to make some moves inside the top five. We've got about two laps remaining as Armand is still trying to make the move on Marshall in the outside section of the racetrack. They're making their way around turn number six, turn number five in reverse and heading back inside the doors. That number 26 machine is not someone we've talked a lot about tonight, but uh, he he's coined the term the Salerno move because he has this way of kind of pushing people off to the side, but doing so in a manner that uh, isn't too offensive. Is, is, yeah, isn't offensive. It's not pushing people out of the way. Uh, I'll show you up the inside right there. But that's it right that, there. Yep. That's exactly the Salerno move. Get As you Chris Nanchoff is getting pushed sideways and throwing up the arm saying, what's going on here? There White we, flag is out. One lap to go. Rachel Hart trying to make two quick passes to put her inside the top. Getting super five aggressive further. out there. As the one car, this was Adam who was just trying to hold his line on the by turning the wheel to the right. There we see Rachel Hart right in the thick of things as she has worked her way back up to fifth on track, and she is all over Corey Ricker for fourth. She may be able to get up inside the top three as well after that nasty lick. I thought she was out of it. I thought that with that crash that she would not have been in contention, but she has rebounded and put herself back in the number five position as they come across the finish line in the A main of round number two of competition. So that was a great rebound for Rachel Hart, but exceptional racing for Marshall Miller and Armand Deligny, but great race as well for Adam Weaver. Yeah, especially Armand who started in fourth position, gaining two points for the, the additional spots he gained, Marshall Miller holding. Adam Weaver is gonna go up with not David Pons did go back two spots. He started the number five. Corey Salerno seven. making a bunch of moves. A bunch of those uh, Salerno moves, I think. Six bonus points going to the way of Corey Salerno as he has unofficially made six passes in that main event. That would probably be the most advances we've seen in that race. I would be willing to bet that that would be the most bonus points that we're going to see come from any of the drivers there in the A main. So we're going to take a couple of minutes now and send these drivers back down to the pits, work on getting our points tallied up from that A main of round two of competition, and we will get the B main helmeted up, staged up, suited up, and into their carts in just a couple of minutes. But this has been some great racing already that we've had, James. This is, this is definitely a good event. What a difference in the reverse direction versus the primary. The, the, the forward direction, we had large gaps, especially Marshall, who took an early lead. Um, but once we went reverse, we had everybody almost nose the tail through the whole field. Your top two were able to break free of the rest of the pack, but they were still competitive against each other. And the rest of the field, you could have threw a blanket over the entire field. It was, it was great competition. That's Corey Salerno right there, who's talking with Jason, who's the, the steward for this event. Now, they, they made it clear in the driver's meeting that there are, there's some leniency that you don't normally get from a GP race, for instance. But if there's blatant hits, um, that's going to cause the point system to be activated. You get two points. Uh, throughout the entire event, one point is a warning. The second point is that you're you're done with the event. So disqualified. You don't want to be that guy. I've never been that guy. I don't want to be that guy. Just don't break the rules. That's pretty much what it's always been in racing to me. Um, but we are going to take a couple of minutes and tally up some results and get some official results from the A main posted. And we will have our B main drivers selecting their carts. We see them selecting their carts right now. And they're going to get themselves helmeted up and back down to their positions in the pit lane, and we'll get the green flag flying for the B main of round number two of competition here at the first ever Exhibition of Speed at K1 Speed Canton.
All right, we are back here at K1 Speed Canton for the start of the B Main for the first ever exhibition of speed. Again, the B Main, same as the A Main, 10 laps forward, 10 laps reverse with that mandatory competition, competition yellow right there in the middle. We have another 15 drivers in this one with Zach Harmon, Tristan Hartong, Chad Squires, Larry Murphy, Bob Sibilla, Ryan Gardner, Nick Nastoff, Devin Horner, Chase Witt, Shane Transu, Derek Raymond, Willis Elkins, Mitch Shannon, Dennis Henry, and Charles Squires completing the field in the B main. So we are taking just a moment, putting these drivers back on the grid, and very important, feet off the pedals. We just seen the, the driver there, Zach Harmon, got himself racked up and then properly planted his feet on the cart so that way he will not get any errors when they wave that green flag. I was just down to the pits talking to some of the drivers and they said that the, the mix-up on the last restart or the start of the race was that they, uh, they got a flag and lights at a different time. So that uh -huh. was the reason some of the cars stopped and started at different spots. Gotcha. So these drivers racing in the B main for top three pay? Yes, correct. So, I mean, we're going to, after accumulating the points, they'll get separated A and B. Excellent. So these drivers still racing for something here today, getting some points. And we do have updated points, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there they are. Adam Weaver, with everything tallied up, only has a three-point edge on Armand with Rachel Hart taking that nasty dig in the previous A main, in round two's A main. Uh, she lost about three or four positions. She lost about five positions when the accident happened, but she was able to claw her way back up to a fifth place finishing position, but that wasn't enough to get a whole bunch of points and keep those top two within striking distance. Uh, Marshall Miller, he got a bunch of points there, uh, taking the checkered flag and the win in the A main. That brought him up to 40 points inside the top five, and that bumped David Ponce out of the top five. So things have been switched around a little bit, and we still have more points to add to it. Yeah, but look at these differentials. So we got fourth, we got 41, then minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. So all those guys, fourth through eighth, within a point of each other. That will quickly change the next couple rounds. And was Katie in the A main in this previous race? Uh, she was the winner of the B main on the on the on the previous round. But in she was not in the A main in round two, if I'm not mistaken. So she is sitting in contention to get a whole bunch of points here. In ninth place overall, Katie Wise. Another false start. Nope, my mistake. She was in the A main, so my mistake entirely. Uh, just disregard everything that I just said. <laughs> Announcers make mistakes too, believe it or not. <laughs> so he jumped the gun on that start, and we'll get things figured out. We'll probably run them around a lap and then put them back down on the grid as we see the yellow the yellow lights flashing right now out there on course. Race control says we're going to just add a lap and regrid them. Excellent. Thanks for the update. These drivers kind of doing the smart thing and not running that full lap, just switching through the joker there and uh, yeah, getting move. this thing started faster. Good move. Thank you, Gar Ryan Gardner, for leading the charge on that. Larry with a good start here in the B main, qualifying in the number five position in the B main. It's a good start for Larry. I want to see what he can do with that with that, uh, with that that spot on the grid. Now they need to be aware that Ryan is the only one who triggered the timing line for a full lap. Looks like he's the one who stopped on the timing line. Uh, might have rolled backwards, which is probably why he's registering a 6.9. We're just assessing 
uh, the timing and scoring for Mr. Gardner there and getting him squared back at zero. We will have to restart this race because we got one car who double timed. So, so really, Larry Murphy's actually starting in the number four position. Yeah, in this B main, great. So we're just getting some things figured out before we wave that green flag. Jason, our track steward, is making his way back down to his position at the start-finish line. And we will get everything restarted for the B main in round number two of competition. But coming out of the B main here in round number two, not going to be a whole lot of delay before we're right back into racing with round three of competition that's going to be the boost round, and there are not going to be any randomizers going on at the start of round number three. Uh, they are going to be lined up in the grid based on how many points they have totally accumulated throughout the event so far. So there's still a chance for some of these B-main drivers to get inside of that fast 15 points, the top 15 in points, and race that A-main for the round three of competition. But it looks like we are just uh, getting things figured out for timing and scoring. Yeah, so they've got to reset the timing system, make sure everybody gets assigned to the correct carts again, and then we can restart. So it wasn't easy as just hitting the reset button. Yeah, unfortunately not. And I think I saw it too when Ryan got stopped on the timing line. His car rolled forward and backwards, which there's nothing you can do about that. There we go. And there we go. And we're off. It looks to be a clean start in the B main. Much and cleaner than our last restart in the B main. Very much so. We see already... The number 10 of Bob Sibilla going after the number 3 of Larry Murphy in through into and out of turn number 4. There we see the number With 10 the of Race Sib Gardner right behind him. Getting a great drive down the back straightaway going outside. Zach Harmon's got a, about a cart length edge on Tristan Hartong who is already opening it up now over Chad Squires back there in third. So going three wide back in through the double doors. Always makes it a tight squeeze before they hit the carousel. Very that much so. That barrier just sticks out in the middle of the road there, and you got to decide who's going to take the right and who's going to take the left, and if not, well, you end up in the middle. We have changed up leaders on the course. Tristan Hartong has made the move on Zach Harmon to take over the number one spot, and convincingly so, as he is already... No, check that. Herman has passed him right back, though, so they were side-by-side side across the timing and scoring beacon last time by, and Harmon was able to put himself right back ahead of Hartong. And here they are completing their second lap around the carousel. They go and down the start straightaway. Harmon still with the edge on Hartong. Bob Sibilla in third, Gardner in fourth, and... Because they're going to go three wide into turn one. Whoa, one driver getting... All kinds of slowed down. The number 31. You're 31 with better make sure everybody gets stopped. Yeah, Zach Harmon kind of putting a bottleneck on the field there into turn number three as I seen his hands go up in the air, and he was without power on that cart. So he uh, went back a couple of positions. I'm not sure if this is a technical or if maybe he double-tapped the gas. And it I don't looks know like It looks like the same thing that David Adkins had on that other final Good observation there, James, as we've seen this in a very similar location on the track. And I don't, mem don't remember what cart number David Aggins was in when he had that defect along that straightaway. I do want to say it was a cart that started with a number three. See if we can dig it up here. 
So we have Jason Lucky, our track steward, out there trying to assess what is going on on the track as this is a very similar situation that we had earlier in the program with the yellow flag coming out very early in the main Six, seven, and we seven, have seven. to put them back down there on the line potentially and do a restart or we'll figure out what's going on uh, but we are sending them sending that number 31 cart back down to the stable and we'll get him equipped with something new but I believe we're going to have an interview here so I'm going to step aside Last rest was nuts. Yeah, that was a uh, that was very very intense. I am joined up here in the box with David Pons. He is one of our uh, leaderboard top five members, I believe. Yeah, I believe so. Six. Six. Ah, you got some points to make up. Uh, so let's best. get back into it. How did you get into karting? Like, what brought you here to K1 Speed? I like to go fast. You little Ricky Bobby and you too. <laughs> Everybody's no, got to have that. I, uh, when this place opened up, we came and tried it, and I'm just, uh, I've been here ever since. Have you had any karting experience before this? Nope. No? Any car racing experience? I missed out on it. My fan, my mom's side of the family is outdoor, like, uh, outlaw racing. Okay. But, like, as a kid, I missed it, so my cousins took up the reins, and... That's unfortunate, man, because you but. have definitely shown some skill behind the wheel, and that could translate into different disciplines of motorsport, but... I come here a lot. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm actually the uh, outdoor track record holder at the moment. The 38.4. Yeah, that's pretty impressive but right I, now. If you gave Marshall enough time, time and laps, he'd he'd get me. So he's very he quick hasn't as done well. It. He hasn't done it yet, but you know. So David Pons, uh, how old are you? I'm 29. 29, and you've been just pretty much karting here since they opened up. So you've only been karting for a couple of years, a couple yeah. of years of racing experience. Oh yeah. Um, were you a member of one of the teams at the 12 Hours? Yes. And what was your experience with that? Oh, that was a blast. We, we came in third place. I was uh, Talladega. Okay. All right. I was here, but I don't remember all That's the drivers. All it's all good, dude. That was a long That was a long race to talk through. I get it. Yeah, that, to, that, to say the least. Um, but it looks like we are back um, underway here in the start of the B main. And now, has it been... Uh, strategy for you to try to just set fast lap times to get in the A main or what has been your strategy or has it just been going fast? <sighs> going fast is part of it, definitely. Um, for the first race, yeah, I mean, go out, set a fast time for qualifying and then, honestly, I have very little experience doing the joker leg, so I kept asking other people for strats. I'm like, what, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to use them all at the same time? Like, So I just kind of had to figure it out on the fly, and luckily it worked out to, I think I was fourth. Yeah, you were up there inside the top five for sure, um, but you were leaps and bounds the fastest qualifier coming into uh, round number one of competition, I believe. I got lucky. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm not going to toot my own horn, you know, but I try my best, and I, I try and get the result I need. I'm glad but I didn't. But obviously, I didn't uh, back go it up. Very, I didn't back it up <laughs> in the next qualifier. So you know, it is what it is. At least you're modest, man. And Absolutely. I, I, uh, I appreciate you coming up here. And what, what are your goals in doing this? Just to just keep coming here with some smiles, or do you want to advent eventually advance to race out in Wayne County and Midvale? I would, or? I would love to race big stuff. I would love to try. I would love to take the chance if I was given one it takes a big know? back pocket exactly exactly so that's the and beauty I'm, I'm I'm on call all the time you know I only got two I got I used to only have one day off a week now I got two but you know it's not in my schedule to try and go out and do something like that and that's but, the so beauty. this so this is the be that's the beauty of k1 is if I hopefully I, if I have a Sunday or if I have this Sunday off I'm going to come compete in uh, GP I think I'm currently sitting third in points for that but Honestly, the points don't matter to me. I'm just here to have. I'm just here to race, and I uh, I, I love who I race with. What's your nine to five? <laughs> uh, I am a locomotive engineer. I drive trains. Very cool. So my usual stick is much bigger, but it's about actually it's about as fast. Now, I'm gonna ask you. Do you know Please. the Hatteries by chance? Because I know that the Hattery family does a lot of things with the locomotives, and mm. if you don't. That's totally cool, but it just would have been one of those Name crosses. Name rings bells, but I'm not sure. Okay. No worries. 
Uh, but we have some great racing going on out there on the track right now with Devin Horner uh, currently sitting up front over Mitch Shannon. Ooh, there's some side-by-side -side right there. We'll have to see who they are when they <laughs> come back through. I bet that's a battle up towards the front of the pack. Yeah. Um, any noteworthy drivers that you see out here in this one? Oh, uh, I would love for Tristan and Zach to start putting in putting in some work. Okay. Uh, Tristan was on my team for the 12 hour. Okay, uh, Larry, I remember his name. Larry, I raced with all the time when I first started. I'm a low key uh, Larry there's fan. There's a lot of there's actually a lot of names on here I don't recognize, and that's a great that's great. That is very that good. It's not all just the same circle of guys. It's expanding the word of the competitions Absolutely. here at K1 Absolutely. Speed. And it seems like it seems like everybody's having a good time. Right Unless on. you get a little too competitive, then people start chirping. But you know, and what are you gonna do, right? <laughs> we all have those days. Oh yeah. Well, buddy, I will send you back down to the pits, and best of luck to you on the rest of the night. I don't foresee boost league going very well because I don't do boost league. <laughs> but we'll see. At least Appreciate you're honest, it, man. man. All right. Uh, great, glad to have you up here, and we will get. We'll get things back underway out there on the race course. David Pons joining us up here in the box. Thanks again for coming up here and uh, just sharing a little bit about how he got into karting and uh, everything about that. And you heard a little bit about the 12 hours. That's coming back up. We had it over St. Patrick's Day weekend earlier this year, and it was a 12-hour continuous team karting event. So it's definitely something you want to look into and ask some questions about to some of the staff members here at K1 Speed whenever you get the opportunity if you are watching at home as it is a team sport, team event, and it's very strategy-based. It's not about just being the fast guy all the time. As we are nearing the halfway point of the B main of round two of competition, and we have Mitch Shannon uh, continuing to hold on to the leaderboard over David, over Devin Horner and Chase Witt back there in third, Nick Nastoff in fourth, and Bob Sibilla rounding out our top five as they currently run. But they will be getting that mandatory competition yellow within the next lap or so. Oh, the 13 cart getting all kinds out of control. That was Devin Horner getting a couple of bumps, and he's going to lose a couple of positions as he now runs just ahead of the number 15 of Ryan Garner. So he loses a handful of positions as a result of that uh, spin out. Okay, well, pace car is going to come out, gather up the field, and then we'll get these guys going the opposite direction. You're going to see a little bit of uh, scoring change here because the, the running order is not correct. When we, that race got restarted. Unfortunately, it got started with the wrong type of race. So these are going to get reset. That's okay. Everybody's going to be in this, the correct order. We'll get it all sorted out. Just we're going to run the pace car a little slower. It's actually pretty hard to drive these cars on speed four behind the pace cart. Their uh, throttles are pretty sensitive, so kudos to these guys for keeping a nice steady pace. Now, can you give us a little bio on who our pace car driver is? Yeah, so Owen Malley is a, a pet worker here that's been with us uh, ever since we opened. And he's he's had an extensive career in gas cart. It's an, I, and I honestly don't follow the entire series, um, but that's where his background has come from. And uh, he uh, races at the local tracks in Pennsylvania and so forth. And uh, just has a wealth of karting experience uh, from the gas world. Now, I know that um, Atkins Raceway outside of Port Washington opened back up after being closed for 20 years or something like that. Are they still currently open? Do you know? Yeah, Atkins, as far as I know, yeah. And that's kind of an arrive-and-drive gas karting track, if I'm not mistaken. I I really should know, but yeah. I, I believe that you can go there and rent a cart and drive in the day. I've, I've checked them out on their website quite a few times, and that might be a, a cross-discipline for some of these drivers to utilize if they want to use the carts. Yeah, absolutely. The gas carts. The, the driving philosophies and styles are drastically different, I would say. Um, racing is still racing. You still need to know racing line and stuff, but the, the, the controls of the car are a lot different. Now not to say the guys don't come here in the wintertime practice. So. Now, these carts are very much different than ones that we may see at rival karting facilities in the electronic world. As you here at K1 Speed run the batteries on uh, LiPo, correct? 
Um, lithium ion. Lithium ion. Yep. Okay. Exactly. And some other carding facilities use the old lead acid battery still. That's correct. Yeah. When we decided, when I opened this facility, I decided that I did not want people to come here and try to set their fastest laps as their battery was dying. Uh, it's one of the big frustrations I had by visiting other facilities, um, especially when you get in a rhythm and you're increasing your lap or you're decreasing your lap times as you go along. Um, to have a battery die on you is extremely frustrating. So we made the additional investment here to get um, the uh, lithium batteries so that we can maintain that 48, 50 volts your entire race and we can run your cart for a lot longer. Different uh, battery technologies have come a long way uh, since the old lead acid cells that we absolutely were always accustomed to. And the battery technology is just continuing to progress. And electric vehicles are becoming the norm in not only what we see on the streets here around, you know, North Canton, but worldwide, EVs are going to be the norm starting around 2035. Yeah, and as we go back to green, it's just a, it's a, it, this is an exercise in, in testing those limits, just like motorsports is the pinnacle of testing almost anything in the automotive world. Um, exactly. We've seen people comment that, well, these are just go-karts. It doesn't really matter. Nope. The, the philosophies apply, the physics apply, and the, the battery technologies definitely apply, even in something as small as go-kart. And the BMS technology applies, the battery management software and systems. Exactly. Uh, that, was, that was something that we exclusively designed here for our usage. Um, it allows us real-time monitoring the batteries with the yellow flag is out. Very interesting. I did not see any drivers crashing on course but we do see the pace cart slowing all of the drivers back down in the reverse direction with oh, I two see what laps it is. completed yeah so Zach Harmon scored on uh, cart 31 they need to get his car number uh, sorted out Everything's kind of stemming off that false start that we got here. As a, we have a ripple effect, one thing to the other. We are showing the correct number of laps in the correct number of direction, in the correct direction, at least. It's a 20 lap main for the B main, but as you mentioned, there was some mix up there during the restart, and wrong style of race was input into the software, and therefore we had to do some last minute adjustments. Yeah, I hate, hate to share too much of the inside baseball, but actually it, it was just a matter that the cars were being tracked before time and not positioned. So, Just trying to give our viewers a little heads up as to why yeah. you only see 12 laps up there in the corner in this 20 lap. Um, but the, first, the first set has been decided, and the drivers on track are lined up in their positions, or at least their positions, after one ra one lap of racing in the reverse direction. The good news is the pace car lights are going to go off after this. They just went out, and we'll get back to racing the next lap. And they've added one lap to the race to compensate for that error. Trying to give these guys as much opportunity to battle it out as possible. And we will see Tristan Hartong with the early advantage as he has clear real estate ahead of him coming into the restart of this one. We are just driving around uh, on this yellow flag lap one more time. And we have some additional issues going on on track right now, but this time with the number 13 of Devin Horner. During this break, at least on track right now, we got uh, another one of our competitors from that A main joining me back up here in the box. Rachel Hart, you had a great qualifying position and you were running great there in the A main of round number two, but walk us through what happened during that A main because I, what I seen was three wide and then you didn't have any racetrack left to go into. Yeah, basically. So um, the way it went was Adam was trying to turn his cart so that I would push him through the corner and he miscalculated and he actually came into me 
And instead of like going through the corner, we both kind of went in the wall. <laughs> and Armand was there on the outside, and he just yeah. walked around both of you guys. Pretty much. Yeah. So, now was that a hard lick that you took? At least it looked from up here in the box like it was a pretty hard lick. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, even with the neck brace, you still kind of go forward a bit. Um, it was a pretty like fast to slow stop there and impact. So. And you know, as a result, that kind of kind of took the wind out of your sails a little bit and you lost a handful of positions you yeah. kind of fell back through the field but you were able to rebound and work your way back up to fifth yeah um i got going again and kind of realized like gotta make up the ground you know the race doesn't stop for anything so just, just gotta can't keep quit. going yeah so so far you are i believe sitting in the number two position in points or am i are you s mm, i might be third now third on that uh there you yeah. are. We got updated points ahead of us. I figured Armand got a couple on that. So pass them. <laughs> coming into race number three, the boost race, do you have much experience with the boost league? Yes. Okay. So I've run almost all of the boost races that we've done here. Now, with the bonus points being allotted to the drivers yeah. that don't use boost, how are you going to manage this final race with the deficit you currently have? So I think it's going to be game time strategy. So we're all going to go out. We're going to start. And if the first guy starts boosting and pulling away and you're getting pummeled from behind, you're going to have to hit the button. I think it's going to play out one of two ways. Either you're going to boost or you're going to get pummeled, depending on if everybody boosts or nobody boosts. And then you're going to have to boost to catch up. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. So either you don't boost and lose positions, um, and hopefully the person passing you is using up all of theirs and you like don't lose as many as they're losing um so it's very interesting i don't know if there's really a good strategy and it looks like you will be lined up in the a main of that third and final race yeah i think it's gonna go by points so yes. i should hopefully line up third and if i can keep that spot and use less boosts than everybody else i should stay on the podium <laughs> Now, what is your experience in karting? I know that I know a little bit about your background outside of karting, so I know a little bit more than maybe the viewer at home. So what uh, led you to coming in these front doors for the first time? Um, so I ran go-kart leagues at High Voltage, and that's where I met James um, and some of my friends here. And I got a message from one of the guys, um, Chris Nanchoff, who's racing today. And he said, hey, my friend's opening a new go-kart track. Want to go? And so we were here, like, first day it opened. Excellent. And you've got the competition in your blood from years of racing, not only here in karts, but also what other disciplines have you competed in? Um, so I was a competitive gymnast growing up, and I raced in motocross for you know, 12 plus years. Um, and then in about 2020 time frame, when everything was kind of closing down, you could still get in the go-kart under a helmet and go racing. So kind of transitioned there, got a little bit into cars. Um, and this has been kind of my pride every week, Monday nights here for Boost League or GP or endurance karting. So not so much on the handlebars, but mainly behind the steering wheel now. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit safer. I did make the observation in the first race of the day. Uh, you were out there in cart number seven, mm -hmm. and that was your old motocross number. It is. So yep. I did make that observation. Yeah. and. James in. It's a like lucky it. cart, right? Number seven's lucky and racing number. So, so who all do you want to thank? Like, who's all helping you out and getting you here on Mondays and, you know, keeping you coming back? Like, do you have any sponsors or anybody that's helping you out to get you here? Or? Um, not really. I, I work and um, I do have an Instagram if you want to follow me. It's Racing with Rachel. There you go. Um, you can watch all of my go-kart races and motorcycle rides and all that good stuff. Um, I have had a couple sponsors for different events where I've reached out to different companies and such, but there we I'm go. really paying my own way. There we go. And I asked David what was his 9 to 5. He was a locomotive uh, mechanic, yeah. which is very cool. That's not something that everybody can say. What's your 9 to 5? Is it something that everybody can say, or is it just one of those boring things? Oh, no. Um, well, I wish it was a 9 to 5. It's more <laughs> like a 6 to whenever. Um, but I'm an engineer, so a mechanical engineer by my degree. But um, I design assembly for vehicles. So I'm the person that tells you how to put a car together on an assembly line. 
So um, between regular cars and right now I'm working on a lot of electric vehicles, different um, like road vehicles and tractors and things like that. Very, very well. So you have kind of an inside knowledge of the EVs then yeah. outside of you know, kart racing. Yep. I'm glad to have you up here, Rachel, and we are, you know, about the halfway point here in the B main, so I don't want to keep you up here too awful long, as I, you're pretty well guaranteed to be in the A main of the boost race, so I'll let you get back down there and get your game face on, and is there anything else you want to say or anybody else you want to thank? No, all good. Well, I'm glad to have you up here, Rachel. Best of luck to you through the rest of the evening, and uh, hopefully we'll get you up inside the top three. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. And we are back underway out here in Sprint race number two of round two of competition, and Tristan Hartong uh, able to get that restart, and he continues to hold on to that number one spot over Chad Squires back in the number two spot with Bob Sibilla still hanging on to the top three, Ryan Garner in fourth, and Nick Nastoff running out our top five. On board with the number 15 of Ryan Garner, he is up inside of that top five. He runs in the number four spot all over the rear fender of the number 10 cart of Bob Sibilla. It's a single file train into turn number one, reverse, battling over that bottom step of the box with only five laps remaining here in the final sprint race in round number two of competition. Round three of competition, that's going to go very, very fast. No qualifiers, just racing and boost racing to boot. So it's going to go pretty quick coming into round number three. Not only fast racing, but boost racing. And if you missed the explanation earlier, when we get to the boost race, it's a 15% acceleration profile on the car. So right now we run the cars at a certain level, and when you hit the boost, you're going to get even more. I guess we can leave that to the, actual, the next race, actually, but um, the driver's going to have control of that, and they're going to get 30 boosts. How much more is quote-unquote in the tank of these carts like how much can you open them up if you had these motors at full tilt and full voltage you could get them up to 65 miles an hour but that would last how about how long um good question so the levels we run them you know and they run 30 minutes i would i would probably depreciate that down to a 15 20 minute run if you were at full tilt that's very impressive the the biggest thing that's going to hurt you is the, just the heat and the batteries mm -hmm. just the such a strong current coming through. Big wires, big gauge wires to hold all yeah, that current. Exactly. Yep. And racing continues on the track. Not honestly a whole lot of, you know, action going on at the top of the field as everybody everybody is pretty much single file with Ryan Garner still back here in the number four spot watching the number ten of Bob Sibilla. And he continues to watch the number eighteen of Chad Squires. And he watches the number nine of Tristan <laughs> Hartong. So that's a four rider train coming into and out of turn number four in reverse and into turn three reverse and they'll click off another I'll bet, lap i'll bet chad is happy to be in the position he's in because that's put him up at the front of the field for the first time tonight i to say ryan garner is just a smidge faster than bob but with only two laps remaining it's gonna have to take some pretty aggressive driving to make that move but here is did a you did you see the moves that larry was putting on people Back there in turn two, Larry, your guy. He was not letting anybody buy him, driving an extremely wide cart and not allowing anybody to make the move. And he continues to hold on to that position. So Larry just inside the top 10, he runs in the number eight spot, but he's getting contested by the number 17, I believe. My mistake on numbers there might have been. Might be the 32 of Derek right behind him. Might have been. Numbers are hard to read when they go past really fast. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, nobody's necessarily going purple, um, indicating their fastest lap of the race. Um, everybody's pretty consistent pace act through here. Yep. But and they're keeping it nose to tail. Ryan Garner still all over the number 10 of Bob Sibilla, and he is still all over Chad Squires for second place. This is still a great battle for the number three spot on the track, the number two spot even. And if Tristan makes any mistake... These three riders will be right there to capitalize, but coming into the final turn, it will be too little, too late for anybody else, and Tristan Hartong is going to take the main win over Chad Squires, Bob Sibilla, and Ryan Garner. So that is great racing all the way down the wire. Well, once we got up and ra racing, it was a very good competition there. Guys were really holding their own. 
very consistent lap times all throughout the field. It's just the unfortunate difficulty of getting the field rolling. And we'll just take a couple of minutes after these guys come back in the pits to tally everything up. But this is going to be pretty much the last break that we're going to be taking as it is going to be pretty uh, quick racing throughout the rest of the evening with round number three of competition just being points based lined up. They're going to be lined up based upon how many points they have accrued throughout the competition. And that will be the only thing that we'll be waiting on, essentially, for the start of this next race. Yeah. Good job to these drivers adjusting to the reverse track. Very happy to see that. Really proud of these guys running tonight. So they are coming back into the pits, and we will get those carts assessed for their final competition of the evening. And there we go. Starting grid sorted by the points standings. There are an A main, or excuse me, there is an A main and a B main, just as we've had all evening with the fast 15 or the top 15 in points and the bottom 15 in points. We're going to have a mandatory competition on lap number 10, so it's more or less going to be a 21 lap race yep. with one of those laps being a competition yellow. And each of the drivers are allotted 30 boosts, as we have mentioned, to use in those 20 laps, whether you use them or don't. And the biggest kicker of all is for every boost that you don't use, you're going to get a bonus point. So that's really going to mix things up if we got guys who are going to be able to run this race without hitting the boost button. Adam Weaver currently is your points leader in the in the overall standings, and he has a, a slight margin over Armand Deligny, I believe, in the number two spot. I'm not sure what the exact points are as they currently are running. Um, yeah, it is... Adam Weaver over Armand with Rachel Hart back in third, Corey Ricker in fourth, and Marshall Miller rounding out our top five. And David Aggins is looking like he is going to be set up really well in that B main. And a lot of this points gain goes back to Adam and the, and the number of positions that he was able to gain in that first race. Exactly. Uh, that was impressive, and that's really what put him in front of the leader, and that's what kept him there. Exactly. And like we mentioned, we are going to be taking just a short break here uh, to get all of these points tallied up. And that will be the starting grid for the final mains of the evening. Round number three of competition, the boost race coming up after the break.
Well, welcome back. After an extensive delay of adding up the points, and uh, we apologize about the delay, but yeah, it takes what it takes to tally these points. So, if you were looking at the point standings, you noticed that the bottom of the A main or the bottom 15th spot was tied with Katie uh, with 31 points. So, we had to make a decision on what to do with that uh, due to the fact that uh, uh, Charles, the number 29 spot, is dropped out of the race. He's not going to run the final. We're going to move Ryan to the B main. And he will start second behind Katie Wise because uh, she won uh, one of her heats. There we go. So the A main will be 14 driver competition. Exactly. And yep. the B main will be 15 drivers. Yep. Excellent. It's a tough break that Charles will not be joining us in this one, but maybe he has to get up early for work in the morning. It has been a long night of competition. And, um, this B main. It's going to be interesting, though. Exactly. Yeah, you st if you're here, you're um, stayed for the best. I believe we are sitting on board with Giovanni Blackerby. Just getting his foot pedals installed so he can reach the pedals then. As he is one of the youngest competitors that we have competing with us for the first ever exhibition of speed here at K1 Speed Canton. And so, when we again, one of the things we wanted for the event was that we wanted it to be somewhat random with the points uh, and unpredictable so that people can't try to figure out where they want to finish, and I think that's exactly what we've ended up with tonight. I have heard off camera that there was a little bit of sandbagging strategy trying to be implemented, but it uh, it all didn't came crumbling down. It, it didn't, work. didn't work out, no. no. So... Well, we, they tried. We were uh, we were hypo or tossing it out there that maybe some sandbagging would be in effect in some of these races, but as we just heard, it actually happened and it didn't work out. So don't sandbag. That's what it pretty much boils <laughs> down to. Then, <laughs> well, if you want to try, go for it. And if it doesn't work, then <laughs> we are just in the process of getting all of these drivers uh, staged up into their carts. And we will get them underway in just a moment. But it looks like the number 35 car of Giovanni Blackerby, there was some issues in trying to get his uh, foot pedals installed properly, potentially. And we have had to switch him over into a different cart. So Giovanni Blackerby will be in a different machine than he was once in a moment ago. So there we're sitting on board with Katie Wise, I believe. As we are just moments away from getting racing back underway here for the first ever exhibition of speed at K1 Speed Canton. Just getting a couple bugs worked out of the issues and we'll be underway. And we weren't totally lost on time uh, because we wanted to make sure the cars were as charged as possible to start this boost race. That that makes it it takes a big toll on the batteries to run this, and uh, we want to make sure they had it topped off as much as possible. I do remember you saying you, it was either on the broadcast or off camera that it's about a one to one ratio uh, for charge time and use time, but with these boost races. Uh, that takes an extra bit out of the battery to, you know, give the cars that boost. Yeah, you'll consume a lot more juice because you're getting that 15% additional acceleration. And, yeah, I would say your your charge time goes up uh, over the, your track time quite a bit because so you're just you're pulling all the energy out you can. I'm trying to figure out who we're sitting on board with right now because that is, that's not Katie Wise, but yes, it is Katie Wise. It just goes a battery flexion off of... Uh, the cart up in front of her and I couldn't see what number it was but that is that is Katie Wise that we were just on board with and they are heading out there on the track right now and we will get them lined up on the grid and we'll get racing underway here in just a couple of moments hopefully just switching carts around left and right but here in the B main we will have Katie Wise on top of the leaderboard with Ryan Gardner, Brennan Thomas, Bob Sibilla, Zach Harmon, Giovanni Blackerby, David a Agnes, PJ Manny Penny, Brennan Squires, uh, Willis Elkins, Devin Horner, Nick Nastoff, Larry Murphy, Derek Raymond, and Dennis Murphy are all on the grid in this one. 
And as you wrote on board with PJ Manipenny, the thing we hadn't mentioned tonight was that he was last last year's endurance champion. So his daughter won the series this uh, this year, and he won it last year in the inaugural event. So you got father and son that are holding the endurance championship. There Pretty we cool. go. Now so on keeping it in the family. On board, we can see the heads-up display changing between brake on, throttle, and all of the different displays. Whenever they hit the boost button, will they get a notification on that heads-up display? They don't, no. Okay. It's strictly what you feel from the car, and you, when, you tr when you press the button, it immediately deducts one, and it stays on for four seconds. And so just a reminder to the drivers to do not turn off your carts when you come back in the pits exactly. from your event. Because we do need to go to each machine and plug in. We don't have any real-time telemetry that tells us how many boosts they're using. So we're going to check to see how many we got at the very end of the race. That's very important for the competitors to not completely turn off their machines when they come back in the pits from the completion of their event. And this is going to be a 20-lap race with a mandatory competition caution coming out at lap number 10. There may be more than just that one competition caution. We may have additional cautions due to incidents on track, but there will be at least the one yellow flag going on during the duration of this event. As Giovanni holds up the foot pedal that came released, uh, I was also reminded that he is also an avid sim racer. So that's why you probably see some IMSA stickers over his helmet. Avid sports car fan. Spends a lot of time in the sim. So he is running one foot pedal as of right now, yeah. And no foot pedal. That might be interesting if that's a... I think they're going to get him another pin. Okay. It just came out. He's been having some difficulties with those foot pedal installations at the start of this B main. But there we are sitting on board with Brendan Thomas on the number 26 cart, sitting in third place here in the B main. So that would have put him in, what, 18th place in points coming into this? Let's check. Yeah, 17th, yep. Okay. Katie Wise then leading the points in this one and so on and so forth, sitting on board with Katie Wise. So we are just at this point in time trying to get Giovanni Blackerby's pin put in his foot pedal and that should be the only delay that we have before we, the green flag will get waved and we will get the B main underway for round number three of competition here for the exhibition of speed. Final round. Coming to a conclusion and are we looking to have more of these exhibition races in the future here at K1 or is this going to be on the halfway mark of the 12 hours? Well, I hope, I hope both, yeah. So we definitely want to continue to develop uh, programs that encourage people to uh, go-kart race indoors. We definitely want to continue to focus on the 12-hour race because um, that was something that had never been done before. We want to do that again. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get some feedback after the event and make sure that people are some would be wanting to run this race again, but I'm pretty sure they do. Okay. And I'm curious to see what the feedback is as well on – what they might want changed or what issues they have seen in the running of the inaugural because there's always going to be some bugs sure. in the first ever event that you run of a certain type of uh, style of racing. So I'm curious to see some input from our competitors and constructive criticism is always welcome. Absolutely. So we are just in the process of trying to get uh, this B main underway and I think it's Giovanni Blackerby that we are holding that is holding up the works here. Um, trying to get his foot pedals installed properly. Going on the green lights. Watch for the lights. So there we just heard Jason say, going on the green lights. Green. And, and off we go. We are racing. Katie gets a good jump. Ryan Gardner making Looks sure that, that gap between her and uh, second place is still in place. Looks to be a clean start. And I can already see some of these drivers boosting. I can see the difference in acceleration, speed in the cart. So it is. You can definitely tell when you hit this part of the track and you're coming in hot, you can definitely tell that, that it's on boost. So. 
probably hitting the boost button there. And they yeah. probably had a few drivers that might have been surprised when they hit that chicane back there that the boost still carries a car. If they don't let off soon enough, it'll take you to the outside wall real quick. In the driver's meeting, we asked all of the drivers if they have ever competed in a boost-style event, and at least half of the whole room's hands went up. So a lot of these drivers may not have ever driven with that boost button before exactly. hit, hitting the NOS and getting it uh Brian Gardner giving Katie a run for her money for sure and if she's going to be forced to use the boost this is the time because he's right on her tail 30 boosts are allotted to each of the drivers and a little squirrely a little bit squirrely that was very <laughs> squirrely for uh, about third through eighth PJ squeezing through there in the number 33 Great battles going on deeper in the field as these and top look at two the gap have checked between out. Two and three. Might see some strategy here with Zach. I mean, if he wants to hold the third position for the prize money, he just has to hold off the people behind him and let these guys battle it out. Katie Wise getting the business from Ryan Gardner through the S turns through three and four, and they have made their way back outside, but Katie Wise is able to put about a cart length between her and Ryan Gardner, and they're making their way around turn number seven and eight and back in the doors they go. And coming into turn number nine in the carousel, still holding on to the number one spot is the double deuce of Katie Wise. Huge line of cars there with eighth through about 12th position. Guys in front, look at that gap from Zach back to Brendan between the three and four. There we were sitting on board with Katie, and you could see her hitting all of her marks on that lap as she was not getting the pressure from the number 12 of Ryan Gardner. I'd be willing to bet that Ryan pushed that boost button a good bit at the start of this, putting him up on the rear bumper of Katie Wise, but she is able to put down a couple of clean, consistent laps there, uh, probably not using uh, that boost button maybe very much at all on that previous lap just to run that nice smooth. There we go, the huge cluster of cars there as we look at the number 28 of David Adkins right in front of PJ. David trying to take on the inside, is he gonna make it stick? He's not gonna be able to get the position. Yep, Giovanni's gonna be able to hold that spot. PJ gonna be crowded here as he goes into turn one. He is what about What about two, will he hold? Oh. No, he gets pushed sideways, but still gonna hold. Getting double bumped, but he loses a bunch of ground to Giovanni Blackerby, who continues to work his way up to the rear bumper of the number five of Bob Sibilla. What can they do on the outside here? The high speed section going into a short braking zone. PJ trying to hold off this double battle behind him. The eight and twenty-eight battling it out side by side. David Atkins never gonna never gonna move his elbows in. It's David Atkins and Devin Horner battling it out just behind PJ Manny Penny. But back on board with Giovanni Blackerby. He is still just outside of the top five, but he has fifth and fourth just ahead of him. And he is ready to try to make the move on both of these riders. They are, they have all together lost touch with your number one and two riders or drivers on course of Ryan Gardner, who has made the pass on Katie Wise. I did not see that pass. I was. Yeah, he jumps up to first. Checking out the battles deeper in the field, but. Ryan Garner able to make the move on Katie Wise. I'm not sure if that was a clean pass or if it was a couple of bumps involved in getting by, but he has since made the move on Katie and put a couple of cart lengths between him and her, and it is quite a distance back to the rest of the field. Uh, Zach Harmon, he's running some pretty good laps here about midway through uh, the first half. Katie taking a look on the inside. Is she going to hold? Oh, not going to hold him through the corner. He's going to hold that line. Getting bumped through the outside was the number 12 of Ryan Gardner and back through the doors they come with the 22 of Katie Wise still trying to close the gap on that number 12 machine. Zach Harmon though, he is really closing the gap as we've seen him just come across the start finish line about three or four cart lengths behind this duel up front and it is a considerable margin back to the number four driver on course, the number 26 of Brendan Thomas. And he continues to hold off that uh, number five of Bob Sabella and the 35 of Giovanni Blackerby. I saw the thumb of Katie Wise reaching for that boost button as she went across the back straightaway. Sitting on board with Giovanni as he is ready to make the move on Bob Sabella and Brendan Thomas. Waiting to see if Giovanni is going to use that boost button to try to make a move on both of these drivers. 
We can see the number five of Bob Seville. It's happened that break, the brake light coming on that cart. I have not seen the brake light come on on Brendan Thomas's cart. Just a driving light in the rear of that cart. Giovanni's running a good line through here. Not only to keep up with those guys, but make sure that he, that, uh, that Bob Seville knows Whoa. he's there. And what, what's gonna. Great move for the number uh, 35 of Giovanni Blackerby, but we have a full course yellow on track right now as there is some issues. <laughs> we got drivers face to face taking care of their issues. Number 19 and 28, David Atkins. He hit me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to get these drivers hopefully righted and facing the correct direction. Hopefully it'll be a quick restart back here into the B main. We'll see what they're going to do with reordering the cars, putting them in position. Curious to know how the restart of this one is going to be, if it's going to be bringing the pace cart out or if it's going to be green flag and go. They will hit the green flag or hit the green lights, I believe. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be like another standing start. Make sure you're looking for a light. Make sure you find one, one in here. Make sure you're looking at the right direction. Yep. So one of our track workers found it, and that's green. And we are back underway in the B main. After some bottlenecks out there on the race course, it looks like Katie Wise is still trying to close the gap on Ryan Gardner. These guys definitely didn't lose any ground, even though they had stoppage. Looks like those gaps are pretty pretty close, but they're uh, back in line. Great battle for four, five, and six out there on the course as Brendan Thomas is what seems to be holding up Bob Sibilla and Giovanni Blackerby. Blackerby has tried to make the move on Sibilla a couple of times, but the door has been slammed shut, and then we had the yellow flag come out, so we were unable to see if Giovanni would have been able to complete those passes before that yellow flag flew. And how much you want to bet that PJ sitting back there in seventh is just watching this all transpire to just try to make sure he doesn't have to use any more boosts than he has to. I he may be that. he may be content to sit in that position. Oh, we got the pace car out now for the competition. Yellow. We're gonna rack up the field together. All right, so everybody will funnel back in behind that pace cart, and we'll have this mandatory. Competition yellow, just to bring the field back together. And we'll pull the pace cart in after everybody is bottlenecked up back together, and we'll get things back underway with the restart. There were two motivating factors to make sure we did this competition yellow, one of which was to stack up the field, because if you wanted to sit back and not use boost, then it was going to reset the field. But the second thing was to make sure that the batteries got a chance to breathe. For anybody who is using boost, we need to make sure we can make it to the end of this 20-lap race. batteries are pretty much like a muscle if you exercise them and you stress them too much they tend to break <laughs> but if you you can pull at them evenly and gently then they'll tend to last a lot longer you can flex the muscle just don't pull the muscle yeah don't pull it we all know what that feels like so we should have our pace cart pulling in in just a moment as this will be a rolling restart after the competition yellow I believe the pace cart will complete the better portion of this lap and then pull in and then we'll get things back underway. So if there was any concern from a driver with that incident that occurred about losing a gap or being in the wrong spot, that gap is now erased. We're gonna start clean when we go back to green. Racing under the lights on a Friday night. 
Very good uh, place to be here on a Friday night. You could be at a, like we talked about, a high school football game, or you could be here at the first ever exhibition of speed. And this seems to be more up my alley. So we love it. It's a nice crisp evening. We haven't had any rain tonight. Although it was, oh, it was Katie hits him from the back. Wasn't the smoothest of accelerations, but can't pass until the start finish line, so they maintain position. She was trying to set herself up to make a quick move going into turn yeah. number one. And it looked like Ryan just didn't do a full acceleration coming back to the green. Maybe a slight hesitation. And there he is going through turn number five and into six. The number 12 of Ryan Garner opening up a gap, a slight advantage on the 22 of Katie Wise. About a cart, maybe two carts you could stick between those two drivers. Those two checked out a good bit in the first half. Zach Harmon was able to keep them honest. But now he's right on the tail of Katie, so a little bit different than from the first half of the race. Good observation there, James, as there is a great battle shaping up for the number two spot on the race course. And Giovanni Blackerby did not have the restart in his favor in this one as he lost a couple of positions. He's now in the number seven spot. We're sitting on board with Giovanni as he is trying to make the move back on PJ Manny Penny, who made the pass on him at this restart. Going back through the garage doors. I was trying to watch to see if we could see where his boost button over there on the right hand side was being pressed. It, even though his hand was in front of it, I don't think he pressed it, so he may be saving those. Bonus points. That's what some of these drivers may be thinking in the back of their head Absolutely. as 30 bonus points could be allotted if you do not touch that boost button at all. And a bonus point will be taken every time you touch the boost button. So you could potentially get 45 points in this race. Yeah, it would bump you up significantly if you did not use anything during that. And 45 points would put even Charles Squires back into contention. I mean, yeah. Adam Weaver still has to race his main, but that would put him back up, you know, inside the top, whatever. Well, the big main will still be finalized with this race. Um, so... About seven laps remaining in the B main as we see may see some drivers starting to use those boosts that they have left in the tank as the number five of Sibylla really reeling in the number 21 of Zach Harmon and Katie Wise had a great three-way battle over the number two position as they make their way back indoors. And everybody is pretty much single file throughout the rest of the field. But the number 12 of Ryan Gardner, he has checked out and he has put about a straightaway between him and the double deuce of Katie Wise, but look out, Zach Harmon trying to go up the inside. Outside, oh, now. He's gonna lose on that one. Katie's gonna regain, but has pressure on the right-hand side as they go through four. Wonder if Closing that was the door. Sibilla. That had to be Sibylla, because Zach was up on her left-hand side. So we're riding on board there with Giovanni Blackerby. As they're starting to bottleneck back up, and Giovanni Blackerby's getting pushed all around. He is the he's the the subject of the bullying here tonight, as he is the little kid racing with all of the adults. So Giovanni has to stand Run his ground. A great race, very good race. I'm impressed with his driving technique and his style, and and, and making the hitting his marks every time he goes around the track. See P.J. Manny Penny really putting the pressure on Brendan Thomas through four and heading outside into five. But there we're checking out our race leader, the number 12 of Ryan Garner, and the advantage that he has over the rest of the field. And Katie Y is still locking down that number two spot with all the pressure that she's been getting from the number 21 of Zach Harmon. Less than five remaining here in the B main of round three of competition. And Ryan's now going through turn two as Katie rounds one and can look back and see the huge gap that he's brought on the field. I wonder how many boosts he has used to put himself that far ahead of the rest of the field. Well, if he's using them before, I don't think he has to use them right now. Yeah. 
Here's Katie Wise still holding on to second as she has opened up a slight edge on Zach Harmon. Coming down into one, Katie Wise still locking down the number two position and she has pressure so close behind her that she can't take a look back at all and see it because it is so close behind her. P.J. Penny keeping the pressure on Brendan Thomas for fifth. As that is just at the top of our screen. As we are riding on board with the number 35 of Giovanni Blackerby, who is losing touch a little bit to the number 19 of Brendan Squires. But Squires up the inside of the 33 of Manny Penny to make the move into, that would be sixth. There are just two laps remaining in this B main. We'll see if Katie Wise is able to hold off Zach Harmon as there is quite a considerable margin between second and third now as Bob Sibilla closing the gap on Zach Harmon. That may be the only battle that we have inside the top five. As just outside of the top five, we have this battle that continues with Giovanni Blackerby in 8th, P.J. Manny-Penny in 7th, Brendan Squires in 6th, and Brendan Thomas in 5th, and they are all in screen. And this will be the white flag. So we'll see anybody using those boosts here on the final lap to try to make a last ditch pass and move up a couple of positions possibly. Outside one more time. That is the number 26. Brendan Thomas still holding on to that position over Brendan Squires and P.J. Manny-Penny and Giovanni Blackerby. At 19, that would have been such an easy move to just spin him sideways, but he was respectful and he, he did the right thing. Coming into the carousel here on the final lap, we've seen the number 19 of Squires reaching up for the boost button. And it is too little too late as they come across the line with Ryan Garner taking the check flag in the race win over Katie Wise. Zach Harmon in third. Bob Sibola goes purple. He had to have been a boost on to get a 39-7 on that last lap. Great time. Brendan Thomas in fifth. Brendan Squires in sixth. P.J. Manny-Penny in seventh. And Giovanni Blackerby has nothing to be disappointed about crossing the finish line in that number eight position. He kind of got bullied a bit about halfway through that B main. Uh, he was sitting around the number five position, but then at the restart, he just got swallowed up and went backwards to about seventh and then got overtaken one more time to fall back to eighth. In ninth, we've got Willis Elkins, Devin Horner in 10th, Nick Nastoff in 11th, Derek Raymond 12th, David Aggins in 13th, Larry Murphy 14th, and Dennis Henry running out our top 15. And just a reminder to these drivers to not Turn, turn off the off. cards. Yes, do not turn your carts off. Oh, he's, he's he's on the button. Don't press the button. Don't press the button, Giovanni. Don't turn your... Da Giovanni. 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 Just Giovanni, why did you do that? Told him to not do that, and they did it anyhow. Giovanni already ruined... I think he just realized what he did. Ruined his chances at getting any bonus points. Oh, no. Let's see if any other drivers are going to make the mistake as we're on board with P.J. Manny-Penny coming into the pits. Well, unless he, Giovanni knew that he used all his boosts, I'm not sure, but that looked like it was an unintentional thing. Intentionally unintentional. Intentionally unintentional. So we are going to take the computers out there and tap each of the carts and see how many boosts each of the carts used and we'll see how many bonus points are going to be allotted to each of these drivers in the B main but in the meantime we do have drivers in the A main getting suited up and they will be making their way to their carts and that will be an exciting finish to the first ever exhibition of speed here at K1 Speed Canton the A main boost race boost sprint race coming up in just a few moments 
and hopefully our A main guys are getting in their cars because we don't need them to be standing around while they do this. So Correct. we'll see if we can get things moving and get back to you guys. We'll just take a moment while A main drivers are getting helmeted up and into their carts, and we will get the A main underway and the points tallied up from the results of the B main here for the first ever exhibition of speed at K1 Speed Canton.
And we are back here at K1 Speed for the first ever exhibition of speed. And we have our A main making their way out on the circuit. And we have the fast 14, the top 14 points drivers on the course right now with Adam Weaver leading the points by a considerable margin. He has about three points over Armand. Rachel Hart sitting in third place in the points with Corey Ricker in fourth. Marshall Miller, he is currently 11 points off of the top spot, but that is, that's, he's not out of it as there is up to 30 points, 30 bonus points being um, assessed and addressed if you do not use the boost. So we are waiting to get the points updated from the B main to see how many boosts were used from the various drivers in that. Some of the drivers did happen to turn their carts off, which cleared their boost counter, and they were not assessed any bonus points. There were a couple of drivers that happened to turn their machines off and would not be um, assessed any bonus points in that B main. But now we are sitting on board with the number 30 cart, and that is Adam Weaver, your pole position holder, and he is getting lined up on the grid right now. He's got the advantage over the number eight cart there on screen of Armand Deligny, the ghost with Sonic, Rachel Hart sitting in the number three position on the grid. There's Corey Ricker in fourth place on the grid. Marshall Miller in fifth place on the grid on screen. There's the number 13 of David Ponce. He is sitting in sixth place. Seventh place, Corey Salerno. There is the number three cart just off screen of Tristan Hartong. He is in the number nine position in their top center of the screen. That is Chris Nanchoff in the number 10 position rest of the field getting lined up here in the B main there we see Mitch Shannon at the tail end of the field in this excuse me in the A main we already had our B main the A main about to hit the circuit and they will have 10 laps a competition yellow and then 10 more laps to complete the A main of the boost race the final race of the evening is set to hit the course and the green lights will flash, and that will be the start of this one as we see some of our track staff just finalizing a couple of our carts. And we'll see Jason make his way back down to his position at the finish line, and we will get the A main underway, the final race here at the inaugural running of the Exhibition of Speed at K1 Speed Canton. There we got the thumbs up from a couple of our track workers and we are just moments away from the green lights flashing inside of the building. There we just see some finalizations getting made at the start finish line. And Jason will present to the racers that we'll go on the green lights. And we'll get the race underway for the final running of the boost race, the A main here at K1 Speed Canton. Just getting a couple of things taken care of down there in the pits before we get this one underway. One cart having a technical malfunction, so there is an additional cart making its way out on the race course. Not sure which driver was having some issues with his cart, but we're going to give that driver that fresh 15. Hopefully get this one underway in just a moment. Look to have 
been potentially the number 15 of or 18 of Rachel Hart's cart that is having some technicals. So we're bringing the number 15 cart all the way around. And we see Rachel there standing off the side. So I'm not sure what's going on with Rachel's cart and why we're having to get it switched out before we even get racing underway. They said that the, uh, the, the battery had a problem, basically. Okay. So before we get into racing and have <laughs> an issue on track, I'm just going to swap it. Fair enough. She's getting all of her GoPros all mounted up. That is the number 15 machine now of Rachel Hart. She is getting herself into the seat, and she'll get herself all strapped in. And we'll be ready for the start of the A main Just waiting for confirmation from the finish line that everybody is all good. And we'll get the final race of the evening underway. And we are racing the A main. And into that first turn, Adam Weaver gets a great start. And we are already underpowered. Not under power, underpowered out there on the race course. So the drivers looking like they will make their way back to the grid. Don't and we'll stop on the start finish line, keep moving. Chase Witt didn't get the memo. Yeah. Dude, I, I was the track workers reporting yeah. that he had his feet so close to the pedals that the car thought that that was that it was on, and you just can't do that. Your foot just has to be completely removed from that. As we look on to Adam, just shaking his head. It's like another delay, another delay. Adam's ready to go. He's ready to wrap this thing up. And we were talking to Adam off screen um, during that B main and before the start of that B main. He's like, I don't know. I don't want to get. I don't want to get bullied out there, essentially, being the guy up front <laughs> with the target on my back. I just don't know if I want to be that guy. But now he's he's down there, and he's going to be that guy. So we'll see if he can play defense throughout this entire A main and hold off the rest of the field. Everybody's going to restart their cars just to make sure that we get reset on the boost counts. Fair enough in case one of the drivers may have used the boost on that opening yeah. quarter of a lap. Opening straightaway. <laughs> That's about all they got before they were already underpowered. But it looks like we're getting everything all figured out. And Adam's, Adam's, Adam's wondering what's going on. <laughs> what's the delay? I have to be here in the morning working. <laughs> Was he the hired gun for this event? Because I think that's what he feels. It's like he's just the no, guy that everybody is no. out to get. Absolutely not. No, he was uh, debated a long time whether he wanted to enter because he wanted to uh, make yeah. it fair. Employees are allowed to have fun, too. That's right. And he is out there definitely having a good time, and hopefully he has a good time at the completion of this one. Well, and his strategy from the very first segment was perfect. He timed his joker laps where he was able to keep pace with guys who were running faster, which allowed him to leapfrog the rest of the field, and that's really what jumped him up in the field. Uh, Bonus in, in, points. in the points uh, standings, yeah. And he's held on to that three-point advantage and over Armand, who's had a couple of uh, bonus points swinging in his way. So you could essentially say that he's got a seven-point edge on the rest of the field as Rachel Hart with 44 points is like the first of the drivers to have not gotten very many bonus points. So without bonus point assessments, Rachel Hart would have been at the top of the field potentially. So that just shows you what yep. these bonus points can do at the conclusion of each of the stages. And I will tell you that we've, we have a preview of the boost and what it looked like at the end of the last race. Uh, we're not ready to announce the points yet, but um, there was 
there was a lot of boost pressing out there. Really? So, yeah. Okay. I, I guess that's good to see because that means people were defending or using it to uh, to their strategy, but um, it's actually more than I thought we would see. I know we have a couple of drivers that are going to get zero, so they're going to essentially have all 30 of their boosts used up because they turned their carts off. Um, do we have any drivers that have utilized over 25 boosts then? Not many. Okay. Not many. I'm curious to see how the points are going to get tallied up um, once we get that finalized from the B main and the A main, which is set to hit the race course in just a moment. Adam Weaver's ready to go. He's just looking off to the side, looking into the pits, wondering what's going on. We have to reset the timer. Yep, because one of the cars stopped on the start-finish line. So once we get that taken care of, we should be able to cleanly restart the A main. Adam was making quite a few comments um, during the breaks that the B mains were full of action and entertainment. Well, the this A main's not... It's not disappointing. We'll say that. Exactly. So we are just working on getting the timing and scoring reset. And that should be about the only holdup that we've got. We're going to try to get a couple of extra onboards tossed onto a couple of these carts in the meantime of us getting the timing and scoring reset. But once we get that taken care of, we'll be back underway for the first ever exhibition of speed here at K1 Speed Canton. Well, we were originally going to do a six-hour race, and I think that's what we're going to get tonight. Waving Talked to a couple drivers down there in the pits, and everybody's in good spirits. They're having a good time. Waving the green flag for the first, uh, first of the qualifiers around 7.30, 7.35. So, yeah, we're pretty close to that. Yeah. Looks like we are close to getting this one back underway. So they were sitting on board with the number 17. That's Mitch Shannon coming straight from work. <laughs> As his pants are definitely showing that. I was wondering uh, wondering what was going on with Mitch Shannon, but definitely, <laughs> he just definitely got off of work and I seen his shirt. He works for a tree company, so that, that I mean, the puzzle pieces all fit together once that, yeah, absolutely. once I seen that. No special uh, race outfits required in order to race these cars. Some drivers I do see have driving shoes, which gives them a better feel of the pedals. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's not s something that's mandatory. A lot of these drivers are just out there in hey dudes and vans. Yep. But some drivers have elected to put the extra investment into their footwear, which gives them better connection to the pedals and better car feel, better cart feel in the end. Uh, usually when you check Tristan's on board, he's the one driving with the Hey Dudes. He says it's the perfect fit for his driving style. Hey dude, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I You do have some drivers uh, purchasing their own helmets. Some of these uh, drivers uh, have street bikes that they may enjoy riding in the fair weather that they can utilize that street bike helmet, you know, coming in here to the indoor karting facility. That way they don't have to use the uh, arrive and drive helmets. They can bring their own from home. Yep, absolutely. There we're sitting on board with Adam Weaver. Is his helmet on or is it ready to go on? It's in between. He, it's there. All right. 
We got a new race set up. Don't think, just do. That's what Adam Weaver's uh, mantra is. As you can see, that's what his tattoo says on his left leg. Don't think, just do. They're going on the lights. Follow the lights and don't put your feet on the pedals. Will the drivers use the boost on the start? And will we get a clean start this time? This one's for all the marbles, so this is the one that's going to cause some chaos all throughout the race as it looks like we've got a clean start. So far, so good. A single file, everybody. I think everybody wanted to make sure they got this race started just so we can get going. I think everybody wants to get done. Yeah. So they want to make sure it gets going. Um, and we see the number 30. That is going to be Adam Weaver making his way through turn number eight and back inside. And he will hold off Armand and Rachel, who has made a quick pass to put her into the number three position. Actually, that's where she started, so she didn't go anywhere. She's staying in the number three position right behind the ghost. Corey Ricker back and forth. Marshall Miller in the number five position. So everybody is still in their starting positions. Not a whole lot I, of action going I on. I wish yet. our angle was a little bit lower um, because I'm pretty sure she didn't didn't hit the boost at all. And uh, she had the great opportunity to do that. And I just heard the, the coming out of turn four, it just sounded like regular acceleration. I'll bet her plan is to not use it at all. She's going to stay on Armand's rear bumper, and if he has, if he gets away, she'll use it to stay with him. But I don't think she's going to use it if she doesn't have to. Wouldn't it be interesting if we get to the end of this race and realize that all these guys held off on using boost because they just wanted that 30 bonus point? That very well could be the case, as it is consistent gaps. It is. Everybody's in field. single file. It's almost as if they're... They're going to take advantage of an opportunity to pass, but they're not going to push the issue. They're not nose to tail like they've been all night. It's kind of feeling each other, other out in the opening portions of this one. There we see some action going on deeper in the field, uh, just around the David Ponds, Marshall Miller area on the course. So around that top five, we've got some moves going down. But single file, Adam Weaver, Armand, Rachel, Corey, and Marshall. Wrapping out our top five, running our top five. Chris Nanchuff being the first, I believe, in the 39s. In traffic to boot, so that one might be a boost lap. It sure looks like it. Here we've seen Rachel doing the Marshall Miller foot, uh, letting the foot just kind of hang out there, not touching the brakes at all. But there's a good four driver battle around the number five position on on course. Let's see if we can find the gap for Adam at our leader. Rumor has it he's pulled away from the field. Let's see if we can tell. There it is. Yeah, Very much so. One. Got about a straightaway edge over Armand. And Armand looks like he has pulled away a little bit from Rachel, about a cart length from Rachel. As we see Corey Ricker about four or five cart lengths the, off of Rachel. The leader of that four pack that just left out the garage is being led by Marshall Miller, who looked like he was holding up David Pons. I, I think Marshall's uh, strategy is not use boost either. It's a very interesting strategy between the A mains and the B mains is who yeah, is because and if who you, isn't. With being in fifth place and uh, 11 points behind the leader, his best chance at anything is making it happen with bonus. Look at that train of cars right behind him as they go through uh, turn three. Now yeah, is it round four? Single file action. Yeah. It's almost like well-behaved children out there. What are those? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> as we still see Armand holding off Rachel. I think Rachel's going to start bumping Armand as they're making their way back indoors. They have lost, lost touch with Adam Weaver, who is pretty well checked out at this point in time. But that mandatory competition yellow's coming out halfway through this. Yeah, and he's done it with 40-second lap times, too. If we look down the scoreboard, everybody except for Mitch at the very bottom, which was almost a 40, is running 40. So to me, that tells me nobody's hitting that green button. Riding on board with Rachel Hart just behind 
the ghost of Ramon Deligny. Kind of lost touch with the number 30 cart of Adam Weaver, who is still running a consistent gap over the rest of the field and just laying down laps, just lap after lap. Salerno still running in the number seven position. He is still just behind Ponce, still just behind Miller, Ricker. Everybody is still unchanged inside of the top seven. It's outside of the top seven is where we've had a whole bunch of changes. So Nanchoff, he started in 10th, worked his way up to eighth. Tristan Hartong, he has stayed in ninth. Andy Cook has fallen from eighth to 10th. Then it's Chase Witt stayed in the number 11 position. Chad Squire's actually fallen off the pace a little bit as he runs back in the number 14 position. I just saw Chad in the pits and I looked at him. He looked kind of tired and I said, you kind of kind of a long day or tired. Or I forget the comment I made to him and he's like, no, this is fun. So drivers still have motivated spirits out there. It's great to see. He's ready for it coming into this final A main as Rachel Hart keeps the pressure on Armand through five into six and coming into seven and they'll make their way back inside of the building. So as they cross the timing line for lap nine, the pace car will be looking for the back of the field, making his entrance onto the track. And just a huge thanks to the K1 staff that's been working the event all night tonight. Their efforts have been um, truly appreciated Lots of hustle getting these cars prepared, ready to go, getting them assigned. They've just done a fantastic job tonight. Rachel Hart really keeping the pressure on Armand Deligny through the S-turns outside. She is not giving him an inch as she pulls back up onto the rear bumper of Armand into turn number nine as the competition yellow has commenced. Make sure that pace car gets around. We've got... Lots of cars that are going to race to the start-finish line, and we don't want them conglomerating in, in turn number one. As Adam Weaver has caught up to the rear fender of the pace cart, and everybody is filing in behind. So Adam Armand, Rachel, Corey Marshall, and David Corey. You have to run through the top seven to find somebody who has changed positions in this first half. And there we see the drivers just funneling back together and the competition yellow will continue as we see the pace cart stopping just outside of the doors. There we've got our drivers making their way back inside the building. And the competition yellow continues for another lap. Any word on so the radio? Yeah, what they're doing is they've noticed that a couple of cars are registering low battery. And they would rather do it under the caution when everybody's stopped instead of making sure that they are um, uh, instead of you know having it on track. Right, this is a fair time to assess and switch carts if necessary. And it looks like we're going to bring out one, maybe two carts to replace a few of these machines. As we see the number 20 machine coming on course, that will replace one of the drivers. We'll figure out whenever we see somebody standing. It has been pretty taxing on the batteries, and to top it all off, we are demanding the most of them at the very end of the night when the heat is the highest and the charging cycles have been the longest. So. 
looks like the number 13 cart is the one that we are going to have to switch out. David Pons switching into the number 20 machine. You see a couple of our drivers just having some chatter there during this competition. Yellow. Any other carts reading low batteries, or was it just the one that we have to assess? I think it was just the one. Excellent. So we should get the pace cart back underway any moment now and complete this competition caution and wrap up with the final half of Boost Race A Main. And here we see Jason making his way back to the start finish line. We have one driver at the tail end of the field waving his hands in the air. We can't start like this. They're discussing it with him to find out what his issue is. That's Chad Squires. Potentially having some issues with his cart. Well, they just told him he's got 78% battery, so doesn't seem to be an issue there. It's 1 a.m. Is it really? Well, like we said before, nothing tests the boundaries like the Crucible Motorsports. Yep. We'll put everything to its fullest use during race circumstances. We're just uh, assessing what's going on, but there it looks like our pace cart getting back underway. And we have 10 laps remaining of competition in the Boost Race A Main. Looks like all of the carts are back underway. And I believe we'll be getting this one back underway whenever the competition caution concludes and that pace cart will come into the pits. We'll get things back underway. They just made the call that 32 is going to be swapped out. So Chad okay. Squires back there in the back is going to be taken care of. Chad looks thrilled. <laughs> he does. Well, that's why I asked him the question earlier if he was okay, and he said he was having a good time. So, Put the game face on whenever the green flag flies. That's right. There we got a replacement cart coming out, and looks like the pace cart is going exceptionally slow to try to pick up Chad on his way back through and get racing underway again. Better to handle it under caution than under green flag conditions. Yep, where we would have to delay things even further and throw out an additional yellow flag. It's better that we just uh, take care of all the bugs whenever the yellow flag is out in the first time. Well, hopefully everyone is enjoying their evening outside as they peruse around. Looks like that All we... All right, we're going to get word the pace car is going to accelerate. Yep. We'll complete the second competition yellow lap. This gives everybody else's battery a chance to breathe as well. And we just have added an additional lap onto the tally to account for this extra yellow flag lap. Yeah. 
looking for a clean restart in our boost A main as we are concluding the final pace lap. And our pace cart will be pulling in to the stables at the conclusion of this lap and we'll get racing back underway. No change in direction this time. So far, the leaderboard is unchanged through the top seven. Exactly. Everybody is where they started. And we're curious to know the boost count as to how many boosts some of these drivers I have used. I really think that we're going to be on the very low side of that count. But we'll see as the second half is now underway as the leader's going to come back to the start finish line. No passing until they pass the line and they make their way through green. And we are clean racing once again. Everybody's still single file up there inside the top seven with Adam Weaver starting to pull a little bit on Armand. I was talking to Rachel, and I think that she is going to try to hold off on using the boost until somebody starts pulling away from her or she starts getting bumped from behind. And both cases, she hasn't had to use a prevention boost button. So Andy taking a look on the inside of uh, Mitch. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting strategy. If you don't have to use it, don't. But if you're the guy that starts, that starts it, Everybody else is going to use it then, too. But clean laps for our top three as they have checked out from Corey Ricker, the number 36 cart. David Ponce still hanging on to the number five position. He has actually improved a spot it, as Marshall Miller has gone backwards. They've gone back to the exact same gap. We've got Adam, who's several car lengths ahead, and we've got Rachel, who's right on the tail of Armand. So we've restarted, and we're back to the exact same one change of position is Marshall Miller is going backwards and Corey Ricker is going forwards. Well, Corey Ricker is also going backwards in the leaderboard as we see Corey Ricker falling back to eighth as Nanchoff making some moves up through the field. It looks like here in the second half, the boost buttons are coming out as drivers are making moves left and right on the field deeper in the pack. I would think Nanchoff's got to go for it. He's got to use that boost and get up in the points as far as he can and not sit back and wait. And Nanchoff, he is, he's back there in 10th place in the points. So he needs to salvage something here. Mitch is just having a casual conversation as he's uh, going past Tristan. Getting ready to make the move on Corey Ricker running just ahead. Got to put Mitch back up inside, the, well, back up, but inside the top 10 of the number nine spot. David Ponce reeling in Rachel Hart, putting some pressure on our third place competitor. And I think with this, this is going to start to uh, pull the boost buttons out for our top drivers. As there's, we're, we're hearing all kinds of stuff going on in the distance. Barriers getting ran into. Something happened with Rachel and David there, but looks like they're going to maintain the same positions. Into three and coming into four. You can just tell the, the sound of that car as it accelerates out of four that is not on boost. It was just she's, normal acceleration. She's going to hold really tight to the inside. How tight can, can she hold this she and stave off David as he charges from the back? right back in. <laughs> She's Armand. shaking her head. Come on, let's go. She's doing everything she can to hold off David Ponce and try to keep Armand within striking distance. I just noticed that previous lap on Adam was a 39-8, I believe, and Mitch is going to dive down the inside, make the pass stick. Good job there. Anyway, Adam had done a 39 there which is one of the few purple sectors we've seen as Mitch lights it up with a 39.6. But based on his move right there, we can see why he's in the 39s. They're lined up like a freight train behind Marshall. Great battle for the number two spot as David Pond still puts the pressure on Rachel Hart and Hart puts the pressure on Armand. Flicking off another lap, we have about four laps remaining in the final B main. Excuse me, final A main. 
the boost race, wrapping things up, the ultimate race of the evening. Adam Weaver still holding that consistent gap over the rest of the field. You see Rachel Hart breaking into the 39s with David Pons as well, so they may have pulled the trigger on the extra power. As we see, David Pons has made the pass on Rachel Hart to put him into third as they're making their way across the finish line this time by. Almost as if Armand is driving a dedicated camera car. It's a very good camera car. <laughs> Got some great, great camera shots coming from the number eight machine. Still locking down the number two spot, but I just seen David Ponce's thumb on the boost button. So he just utilized that boost button down the back straightaway and heading outside. Gotta put the pressure on him. Is he gonna, yeah, he's looking on the inside. Not, oh, it's gonna give Rachel an opportunity to come back at him. So we're seeing some of the drivers utilizing the boost button. So we had Pons up here and he wasn't looking forward to the boost race. Pons is gonna go on the inside. Would put him on the outside it's in turn number two and yeah, that- Hard to make it stick through two and three. Allowed Armand to maintain position. And there we see him reaching back up for the boost button is the, the number 20 of Pons. So he continues to put the pressure on Armand through the turns outside and heading back inside. Two laps is gonna turn to one lap remaining. And it is winding down and winding down fast as Rachel Hart continues to put the pressure on David Pons who puts the pressure on Armand with the white flag flying. What will he do on this last lap? Will he risk it, keep pressing the boost? I gotta think that Adam has not used the boost, if at all, and he's just gonna maintain his position on track. I'll bet he used some early in the race because he did pull out that gap, but second half seems to be cruising to a somewhat Whoa. easy victory. What will Armand do here? Armand will just hold it. Rachel will be back in the same spot. Putting the pressure on David Pons coming into the final David two look on turns. the inside, can he, can he get him? Rachel unable. There's just no room to the inside of that carousel. To make any moves in the checkered flag. Checkered flag flies. will fly. Adam Weaver will get that race win. Armand will cross the stripe in second over David Pons and Rachel Hart in fourth. And Corey Salerno. Moving it up into fifth. Heck yeah, man. Moving up a couple of spots. Not assessing any bonus points for positions advanced in this final race, but moving up a couple of positions. Great drive for Salerno. Uh, making the move on Miller, Tristan Hartong in seventh, Mitch Shannon eighth, Corey Ricker ninth, and Chris Nanchoff unofficially rounding out our top ten. And these carts are coming back into the pits, and we will be assessing boost. how many boosts did they use. Yeah, the boost bonus points are going to be uh, tallied up. As these drivers are making their way back into the pits right now, and they're taking their helmets off for the final time. And they're just going to hang out for a little while until these results get tallied. <laughs> Adam's anxious to figure out how many boosts did he use. No. Does that mean none? Does that mean none? Really? Interesting. I'm just staying quiet up here in the box trying to see if they talk about how many boosts they used. It's like the cool down room in the F1. I was doing the same thing to Armand because I had more straightaway speed than he did. But anytime I turned left, the cart would like. Great racing going on. <laughs> Just trying to hear some uh, some racer chatter, as that is always a good perspective to hear. Uh, the driver is just coming off the race course. Um, but we're going to take a couple of minutes and get all of the points tallied up. And we'll get the official results for the first ever running of the Exhibition of Speed here at K1 Speed Canton tallied and presented to our top finishers.
everybody has used loose so far. I have. You don't watch that part of the GoPro. I didn't have it. Zero.
B-Main, that's who we need first. B-Main, who was in the B-Main in the boost race? Uh, we, we, have the, we have the top three for the check for the ceremony, and then the final points will be uh, tied to lead it, or at least we are tied to lead it. And we're trying to look at them, you can look at them on the computer too. But. All right, B-Main for the boost race, our top three finishers. Finishing in third, we've got Katie. Woo! Great race there. Third place. Bob. Good ride. Good drive. Second place for you. And Brandon in the B main. Took the uh, number one spot. Last name? Oh, that's on a check. That's why we took you, Brandon. Yeah, Brandon. Thomas. Yeah, that's Thomas. That's you. You're the number one guy. Those are the top three finishers from the first ever exhibition of speed in the B main here at K1 Speed Canton. All right, and then on to the A main. All right, A main drivers, step forward. I gotta scope out this one, so I have a name on it. Rachel, round up the top three. Second place went to Armand. The ghost takes the number two. And Adam, hired gun, taking the number one spot. Not hired, but he just wanted to have some fun racing with us tonight. The race win in the, in the booth. So congratulations, those are our top three finishers in the A main at the first ever exhibition of speed here at K1 Speed Camp. Thank you all for participating. We want to probably be shorter next time, but thanks for sticking around. Um, if anybody wants to see their points and stuff like that, feel free to stop in. I'll show you what we got. We hope to see you another day. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for doing this. Thanks, James. And we're out, Andy.